well, some people were concerned. Some people just threatened Thistletop straight to Fern, hoping that Thistletop would see it that way. That was also me. Uh, my notes here say, at least we found the damn house. We're trying to bullshit our way in. This will be fine. It wasn't <laughs> fine. Uh, Raided the house. Was fine. <laughs> it wasn't fine. <laughs> Oz tried rushing past the guards. Uh, we made it in, found Georgita hiding under the bed. Fern and Clicks showed up, uh, not quite themselves, but snacked back to themselves after Hyacinth killed Georgina. Uh, we tried to figure out what was what to do with all the stuff that um, had been taken for Georgina. Uh, gave back as much as we could. Somehow we didn't end up in jail. That's my notes. Uh, Georgina must have been more disliked than we thought. Got almost half of everything returned, held on to uh, virtually nothing, and uh, left everything there. Uh, we made it out of town. Feels good to be back on the road. Everybody stayed in the nest. This was a crowning achievement for Torek. Uh, Hyacinth stayed in the in the cart doing more uh, a bit 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 scribing of scrolls. Bit bit bit. Uh, however, when uh, Oz woke up, uh, woke during watch, Oz and Torek walked off to. Um, Followed the smells of something roasting not far off and found a trio of goblins. Somehow I did not actually write down their names. Their names were fantastic. They were pretty good. Oh, Yolk wait, I got there. them. Yeah, okay. they're in <laughs> Benny. There we go. Yolk, yeah. Peeve, and Benny. Uh, they were having a ritual. Um, they were having a ritual night for Maglubiet, who... Um, they were a bunch of creatives and hoping for inspiration. Oz joined in, and there was uh, some sort of uh, vision for Oz uh, that occurred after drinking the very shitty wine. Uh, Oz left suddenly, said the wine showed him weird hills, glass tower, got sucked into it, pulled into and through a city. Weird stuff. Uh, but, 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 but might be a coincidence, but when it comes to the gods, I don't buy coincidence. Uh, we went back and got inks, and Oz went to sleep. I forget who Oz was the big spoon for. Hazel, I think. Hazel was the big spoon. Yeah, Hazel was the little spoon. spoon. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, I grew a little. I didn't put that in my actual notes because Torek didn't fix it, but I just remembered it because uh, Oz was basically on fire last session, and yep. uh, we we are still having this campaign largely through Oz's efforts. I feel like. Um, <laughs> Uh, we brought inks to the goblins. Uh, inks had more of the wine, uh, had a vision, but did not say what it was. There was some chatter between um, inks and Torek on the nature of divinity and the gods. Um, I think that's about where we left off. My notes end on brought inks out, real curious, got chatty, lost her faith, seems, saw something, but won't say what. I respect that. And it is now the 21st of Arcturiac as we wake up the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, during the fight, I didn't actually say it, but during the... No, I did say it. Fern and Click both showed up during the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, summoned by Dream. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now. Sorry, I haven't eaten yet. Okay. As you're packing up, is there anything anyone needs to say or do? And I only I only make mention because there was the camp that you guys visited the night before. Uh, is there any interest in returning there or talking about that further with everyone else in the morning? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. So you can head back onto the road in the uh, brisk morning. You have more sunlight today than you've had, and you see more uh, puddles rather than filthy snow heaps in the, in uh, on the road. Um, you are now well without the established um, and even informal borders of the Luxron core and Luskin's influence, so a lot of these roads are not as 
uh, well maintained. Um, for those of you who have very little experience outside of that city, um, there is incredible ordinance and care uh, for the highway structures, so that the um, so the armies have cavalry have cavalry and uh, infantry have an easier passage. However, um, uh, this is beyond their influence, and so is beyond their uh, maintenance. And as you are running, or as as you're, as you're running car carts, uh, carriages, um, you have spots of visible little villages and uh, and pockets of civilization um, near the road, little branches off, and again, travelers that are also making use of this highway. Um, <laughs> uh, how are we arranged? Are we arranged as per your standard travel? Yeah, Grifter's boat yeah. up front, Torx cart in the back. Yep, Torek on top and Inks uh, on the front of the cart with uh, Haza and Mel driving. Yeah. Unless yep. someone else wants to take a turn. Okay. Well, in that case, I need Inks and Torek to make me perception checks. First roll of the night. All right. Yeah. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Um the two of the two of you are not making what I would say um the thing is is while traveling, you can be on lookout, but there's only so much you can do to be in constant vigilance. However, um it is noted by the both of you uh that like there are creatures that are within the trees, bigger creatures than you would assume to be within trees, more than your average squirrel and bird. Something big is climbing in the boughs off the side of the highway. And then both of you uh, catch the sound more appropriately first, but then uh, inks quickly turns to see what is uh, incoming stones being hurled off of the side like, from the side of the highway from the tree line uh, and crashing into the sides of the carriages uh, nothing that you would consider like not huge stones these are like maybe f like smaller than fist size rocks pebbles being hurled and denting uh, crashing into the uh, the sides of the uh, of the sides of the carriages uh, to the uh, to this to this uh, to the starboard side. I'm gonna go that way, starboard side of the road. <laughs> um, which one of Cody's other characters is whipping rocks at us? Okay, nothing to be said or thought or done. You're just letting them throw things I, at you guys. I, I I didn't know if we were rolling into initiative or anything. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Um, no. Okay. Nope. Just waiting to hear what you guys want to do. Uh, how? Sorry. Did did we have a long rest? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I just need to. Mel was not woken in the night to go to a uh <laughs> to a little goblin party, so Mel got a full night's rest for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll start throwing, if I can't, Eldritch Blast at some of the rocks as they come in to try to deflect them. I'll try and catch as many as I can. <laughs> uh, I'll... Are, hey! Do, do I just to... bought this damn thing! Stop throwing rocks! <laughs> and I will, uh, I will shoot. Oh my god, okay. I mean, just um, into the trees, I can't see sh I have no idea what's chucking rocks. Uh... I think this is going to merit... Sorry, Mel, what were you going to do? Uh, is the cart in front of me slowing down? Is Inks and Haza slowing down? Uh, probably not yet, no. Okay. okay. Yeah, then I'll, then I'll just keep pace. Okay. Uh, for Torek and 
Haza, are you are, are you aiming at anything or are you uh, rolling to intimidate? Uh, I'm aiming at if I can some of the rocks as they're coming in, like especially if there are like big, like you know fist size rocks getting slammed. Since I can't okay. see shit. All right, and then Torik, what are what do, what are you doing? I am I I am more shooting just to scare things off. I I have no idea where these things are in the trees. I have no idea what they are, so I am just trying to drive right. things off. I'm not trying to like take the time to triangulate rock sources. Okay. Uh in that case, I think uh Haza, you can throw some errant blasts, but these small stones are not like significant targets enough for this force to really do much. Toric, though, could you roll me an intimidation check? That's about right. Uh. <laughs> um, Hard to be intimidating when you're hiding behind the luggage. <laughs> you give a shout and uh, and rack your musket fire upwards and um and you hear like a shriek and then something crash out of the trees and fall with a thud and then some crying immediately slam the cart to a halt <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. we gotta stop <laughs> god damn it <laughs> just run vault off the side <laughs> yeah, I'll do the same. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you uh, fire that thing into the air if you want to warn them? No, I don't think I hit them. I guess you uh, could have just scared them out of a tree. <laughs> That's valid. Uh, a couple of you sprint towards the trees, and uh, and you see two small or like two children uh i say small but like, like two children who are climbing down uh quickly after the tree kind of like letting themselves drop a little bit and you uh see where they're landing near um a much smaller kid who is uh crying and holding their arm i, I will follow uh oh, okay. shit uh hey kids um <laughs> Well, I think we learned a valuable lesson today. Hey. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> hey, you, you, you okay? Nothing. Let me see. Nothing looks broken, right? Oh, God, I hope nothing's broken. Uh, <laughs> this kid kind of looks up at you and, and is, is like, uh, not like screaming, crying, but just quietly crying and sees you and, and back, like, like scoots backwards, Torek and Mel, actually. <laughs> Both of you seem a little frightening to this uh, small human child who couldn't be more than like eight. eight. All <laughs> right. Hey, hey. Uh, I'll okay. take point. Uh, how how much how much of like running does this kid look like he's doing? Like it, this kid is not capable of running. He's like flat on his back, prone. <sighs> okay. Hey 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 hey. My name is Haza. What what are your names? Uh, the the oldest of them is like trying to comfort the smallest, um, uh, uh, standing over him, just kind of go, just shushing, uh, and and uh, the middle child, um, uh, the the only girl amongst them, um, with with tiny little ribbons tied into her hair, uh, says says we didn't we weren't trying to do anything that bad we're just it's just like you have these big old things out on the road it's it's, it's weird they look tough they, they, they scared you scared kurt well i mean the lesson learned is if you poke something tough it's liable to poke back so just try not no, to do no, that not, okay not, yeah. not, the, not the time apart the from that um can we see your friend there Hey, I'm really sorry I scared you. I thought you might be bandits. You were you were hiding and scary on your on your own. I can 
take care of that. I can I can fix you right up. Uh Tork, can you make me a persuasion check at advantage? <clears throat> He's just doing very good for you here, but um but since you're offering to do the healing. Come on! I will spend inspiration on that. <laughs> oh, while while Tark is trying to talk, uh them yep. uh, uh, <laughs> spend another inspiration. Uh, okay, mean, that's I, as good as it gets because I'm going to run out of inspiration. <laughs> I can just do it from here, probably. Uh the the oldest boy uh who's cradling the, the smaller one kurt uh just just says i'm gonna tell our uncle and like starts to try to stand up with the, the little guy and who would that be yeah you got you got people around um the 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 middle child uh says yeah uncle kian lives over there and she points into the woods uh Shit. See, okay, th th there's something that I want to check for, but I don't know that Mel would know. <sighs> okay. <laughs> this you, seems like some face shit. Do you want us to go with you and explain, or... I'm sorry, it that sounds... was Keen? Keen. Uh, it sounds like you might be wanting to tattle on us, and that's fine. We did scare your friend here. Um, he's my little brother. I'm supposed to take brother. care of him, and you hurt him, and I'm going to go take him to Uncle Kean. Okay, well, why don't you tell your brother to just hold still a second? We just want to make sure he's okay. We, If we caused him to be hurt... That's our responsibility to fix, right? Mel sort of leans over. Not really. Shut up. It, it is. It is. <laughs> if we it cause is, him to fall, it's our fault, right? So we need to make it right. Okay, so you can roll, and I'll give you advantage just because I <laughs> like that you're doing this well. Eh. <laughs> Charisma caster, everybody. <laughs> can um, suck shit and still do okay. The little, the little girl says, I think she's right, Peter. We shouldn't have been throwing rocks. And um, the oldest is kind of still scowling. Uh, he's kind of um, uh, rougher looking, like maybe 11 year old. Um, uh, he's got like well kept clothing it's not like he, it, he but like nothing wealthy upon any of them mm -hmm. they look like they're like well cared for children um uh all of them and he sort of looks at you and says what can you do me yeah besides carry him not much i don't have that kind of magic but these two do Uh, the the little one still seems very afraid of uh, the two, <laughs> the other two. I will hand my musket to Mel. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I, I promise you. I'm do just going gonna... to. She, she looks at Torek like, do you want me to? No, just, oh, just hold on to just that. I just hold, hold my hand out. Give me the gun. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it, Mel just kind of keeps it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, right here on your arm. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put my hand right there, and it's gonna stop hurting. Okay. <laughs> now does it, do you do you exhibit any like holy light or divinity when you do this? What does it look like when you heal? Um, that's a good question. I expect. Um. There is probably a very rainbowed hue uh, to his magic, given the the swirling colors of Atsgaroth's holy symbol, um, accompanied by a, a 
a the the smell of some random dragon breath. Poison. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the little. Mm-hmm. See, see, there you go. Little guy kind of stops uh, s- uh, sniffling and he and he wipes his uh, the inside of it, like the front of his shirt, over his face. Um, and just kind of smears like snot and tears uh, down his face. Um, uh, and 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 the while while you are like kind of while you are healing and 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 sitting over him, uh, the girl just she's leaning over your shoulder, Torek, and just says quietly well not really quietly to you but very much to you and very directly to you you're kind of short yep that is very true even for even for my kind i am very short well spotted are you gonna get bigger well i stopped growing about 75 years ago so probably not you should, though. You should get a lot bigger, right? Yeah. And she looks up at the, the oldest who blows his hair out of his face and says, you're only going to get a little bit bigger. We should go talk to our uncle. We'll tell him that the things on the road were loud and scary. We'll see what he'll do about it. Uh, and they start picking up what? the the smallest of them. Why? Why would he need to do anything about it? Because it's loud and scary, and it hurt Kurt. Uh huh. Well, I mean, wait. One of these things did, or the fall hurt Kurt. Uh, the girl looks at the oldest, who, uh who is doing his best to not seem like he is listening to you and just picks up the the littlest and starts walking uh, into the woods. She kind of stands there in the underbrush looking after them for a while and then back at you guys. You guys drive those big things? I've been for a while now. How did you train them? Magic. Just yeah, hands. mostly magic. And lots of practice. They're hard to drive. Miles, you can't draw you can't draw in Tyler's notebook. That's very <laughs> rude. <laughs> Come on, let's go find somewhere else to draw. <laughs> <laughs> The to be fair, that notebook is mostly Miles' drawings now. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds like Miles is on his way to tell Uncle Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Are your brothers going to be coming back with him, or do you need to go join them? Mm, I shouldn't be out alone. Not with strangers. She looks at you guys again before scampering off. <laughs> Would do you want us to wait here? I don't uh, think that's necessary. Hey, yeah. Second of all, I can't be the only one who's getting a bad vibe from this uncle character. Why? We haven't it's, even met him. It's a. I that mean, lives, uh, look, 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 look. Yeah, a weird guy who lives in a forest. Like the people the, live in the woods. Yeah, I live. Hey, that's, that's just what people do. Then. And I think they get weirder. I don't think they start weird, but I think living in a forest makes them get weird. It's <sighs> my she, I don't <laughs> think Mel just it, starts walking back to the cart. If anything happens because of this, all of you owe me ten gold, or I keep all your stuff. What the hell are you talking about? What? Ten gold, Torek. I'm not betting. It's coming my way. <laughs> What's the bad? I mean, it's definitely not, because... <laughs> well, w- apparently we're not going to investigate this uh, 
mysterious man any further. I mean, I really want to is the thing, but we we already been distracted a couple times. All right, again, if nothing happens, then oh, for the love, uh, okay, nothing happens. We again. can check with everybody and go investigate the man in the woods, what? or we I can mean, just go on our merry way. I'm with you 100% inks, but we all know what's going to happen when we ask. Mm. <laughs> uh, inks will kind of hold her head up to the sky and then, like, stomp off. I mean, going on our way seems like the only reasonable option. I'm not saying what I'm saying is necessarily what we should do because there isn't much to go off of but again just bad vibe in general we should stay vigilant at least bad vibe from what well <clears throat> it it seems like this person might have the power to do something about the big scary metal things on the road. Uh, I don't yeah, know like what... have a gun? Okay. I mean, I admit I'm a little curious what they meant with that, because... And also, it feels like they... I don't know if I just sort of stopped listening at some point, but when I tuned back in, it did seem... Somebody said something that made me feel like they were sent here. But they could just be, you know. Have either of you ever met a child or no. yes. spoken with one for? Oh, OK, I believe that, Torek, actually. You did great. Mel, this one's. Um... I've had plenty of kids. Too. What was that, Torek? I'm 78. What? I'm not dead. I've had kids. Right. Hell, I even laid some kids. It's fine. Laid some eggs. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Why are you weird about this? Yeah. This yeah. Is no. A I'm really weird thing to be weird about. No. I'm dis. <laughs> I'm disentangling the idea of like tor dad Torik from just you know father Torik. It's two. Yeah. Two different sort of feels... streams in my brain. Yeah. The hell is. Just... <laughs> You're right about that one. Yeah. Did you raise the children, Tork? Yeah, I mean, we raise all the kids. That's that's how it works. Okay. All all the eggs go in a hatchery. The eggs hatch. What? We don't need to talk about this right now. But yes, later we'll talk about it because now I'm kind of interested separately about the. Life. Yeah, yeah, we sh we should figure out if we're doing anything about this Uncle Kian, or I mean, if we're just driving on. I feel like driving on, and then if he does anything about us, we uh, put him in the dirt. Uh, okay, <laughs> um, do we have to jump to killing? We couldn't, like, you know... Worked I'm... in bear hold! Hey! It did, okay, it did work there, yes. Yeah, no, I don't feel good about it. I, I don't feel good about trying to kill his uncle Kian. It's fine. yeah, it's just some kid's uncle. Also, if we kill him, then like, who's taking care of the kids? Are we gonna take the kids? I hope not. But then don't kill the what? uncle. <laughs> so... <laughs> so... <laughs> what? You you're just gonna leave three kids stranded in the woods? Well, I mean... A second ago, you were like, ah, oh, people can't live in the woods, and now you're gonna leave three kids? It's not that they can't, it's just this seems suspicious. <laughs> I mean, I could see the... All the right, big Oz, right, we knife. Grifta's bone. <laughs> we're having another meeting. Oh, no. Oh, we thought we were only just getting off to take a shit. Are we... What is happening now? Uh, there was some Did use. you really this not rock. notice the rocks being thrown at the carriages? Yeah, but it stopped, so... Yeah, there were three youths. Also, now's a good time Do to get the bathroom. I mean, I've heard of hail. I didn't know if that might have been what it was, but... Do you, uh, <laughs> do you have any threes, Hyacinth? 
Uh, you go fish. <laughs> Damn it. Wait, what's this about youths? Yeah, youths. Three youths. Three youths. <laughs> okay, now that we said it too much, it, it's starting to lose its meaning. Three children. Mm-hmm. They were throwing rocks at the car. Torque scared one of them, fell, broke broke his arm. Uh, they're going to go tattle to Uncle K- Kian on us. Uh, Mel's suspicious about the uncle. But to be fair, I am suspicious about most people. I don't get out much. We can this just ride on. That's, that's valid. Yeah, we're just going to ride on just if we stop because of a uh, wild mountain man, well, I'm forest man, it comes bursting out. With a that's gun presuming, and or an axe. <laughs> that's presuming it's human. Well, I mean, what? Do not feel like we should like go and... I, I'm not saying I'm like on uh, the side of Mel here that it it's might a... be like a creepy monster. But I don't know. Should we like go and explain that it's all good? Or... I don't know. It might be quite a hike to this guy's... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to find... Too. Might, I mean, uh, a, cu- a couple kids just ran here from there. Might I mean, I an just inconvenient the amount of time. <laughs> What's the middle ground? Please, Oz. Perhaps we wait here for a little bit, maybe have a nice meal or a snack. And if this uncle shows up, then we'll talk to him. And if the uncle doesn't show up, we'll be on our way. No reason to go traipsing off into the woods. That feels right. Best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that way we don't go entering anyone's domain, and we're still here to be accountable, should we need to be. Okay. Also, just chalk it up to a long or an extended potty break. I mean, now you said do- domain there. You said domain? More people saying it's not... Do humans have domains? Yes, I, that's what kingdoms and... Yeah, I mean... Communities are a person's phenomenal. yard is their domain. Okay, you know? okay, I don't yeah. know if this person has like a stand your ground law or anything like that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I mean, it's true. If we go walking off there and he shoots us, uh, we were Tit trespassing. Yeah. I feel like that's also not right, but whatever. Do people do that? Shoot what, people? Shoot people? Torque does it all the time. Yeah, we know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if I just like walked up to your front door, would you just open the door and... I wouldn't, but... Some people are crazy. He lives in the woods. Why is so hey, crazy you know, about that? Hey, people live Man, in the just, woods and aren't he's crazy. Just a guy I, in the woods. <laughs> I have <laughs> sown the seeds of conspiracy. Keep saying he's crazy for man. living in the woods. He's just a guy that lives in the woods. <laughs> no, I'm not. He might mean, have a beard. Crazy. In my defense, <laughs> Hazel, mine was. Hazel, 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 Hazel. You're, you're misunderstanding me. It's not that he seems crazy. It's just how they talked about him seemed suspicious. Yeah, their uncle. Who's yeah. probably big and strong and bigger than them, and they defer to for you know acts of violence when it's required. Like if a bear wanders by and you need to kill it, you go to your uncle so he can do it. <laughs> Mel is running the math in her head. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, yes, but again, how they put it was just weird. But they're kids. They're fucking weird. All kids are weird. That's like part creepy. of the. My what do you mean weird? Creepy. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, his kids aren't weird. Well, weird's relative. You know, everyone's kids no, are weird to someone else's kids. Uh, you know. Torek Hazer just talking. called your kids weird. Do the I mean, they're kids, where you so point at your eyes, the two fingers point at Haza. <laughs> I'm just saying these three individuals seemed creepy. What? They were children! They're children! 
They didn't even do anything except fall out of a tree. They threw rocks really well. I'll give them that. That's not nothing. <laughs> okay, this is, okay. This is gonna be okay, the one, they did say the one wasn't going to get much taller. That was kind of weird, because I feel like that if that kid's human, should have gotten a lot taller, but I then again, know, my perspective no, on height, admittedly, is a little messed up. That's so. one of those, like, you I know, older siblings sort up, of, sh yeah, yeah shit-talking. I've never actually had a sibling. So, well, it feels like what siblings would do, probably, in theory. Silent sticks her thumb out the window in a, in a thumbs up approval. Okay. Yeah, we got a confirmation <laughs> on a sibling. That's sibling stuff. Toe to tip. <laughs> okay, so we're having a stretch break and a meal, I guess. Second breakfast. Second breakfast. Okay, you all camp out for a short rest <laughs> and wait for Uncle Kean to show up. If he does. And he does not. In, in, in the middle of this at some point, like doing paperwork, Mel just kind of looks up and just scans around and is like, Hey guys, why don't we just write him? Explain the situation, say we're sorry, and then roll on. We could have uh, one of the youths deliver it. Well, the youths aren't coming back. They're, they're not here. Uh, Mel just takes out a, a piece of the flying paper. Okay, so you throw that at, at, a, at a youth. And they give it to their uncle. And, yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. You got their names right. And mostly... Hurt was the little one that got hurt. Peter was the older. And the girl? The only sensible one we didn't get the name of. Holy shit. I mean, I'm sure Peter's sensible. He's just probably not talkative. I just wouldn't give to Kurt. He's dealing with things right now. Yeah, Kurt's up against it today. I don't know. Peter seemed pretty adamant on tattling so if who I mean Peter's that? also the eldest so he's protecting them because he's a protector yeah but I mean, we, we could we, we could just you know go for a short walk you know if it winds up being that far we can always turn back but uh, all this talk I am fairly curious oh shit <laughs> We can we can just move on. Mm -hmm. And you know what they say, curiosity killed the caryatid, but I would still like to see what's up. I see, I see you, Tyler. Tyler, Tyler, could you just take an inspiration oh, for your weird idiom? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could, what, go walking in a straight line in the direction they came from. I'm sure somebody can do some tracking. It's like the forest. Isn't that supposed to leave, like, better footprints? I can try. I know how oh, to also, uh, do it. I can't I, believe you all are making me agree with Hyacinth that we need to go. I can't. How either. are we the I, sane I, ones here? I started this, and I don't even. I don't. Yeah, really honestly, want to check it out. it's Mel's fault for making it weird. It was just some <laughs> youth throwing rocks, and then Mel made it weird, and now everybody's got that like suspicion that Keen is a monster man. Well, well, I'm the weird one. Just ignore me. Let's hop back in the cart. Come on. Let's okay. Go. Look, maybe maybe <laughs> he'll just be like. Oh yeah, these darn kids. Y'all are right. Uh, thank you for you know teaching them a lesson. Here's some gold. Okay. Hyacinth, I, I don't think I he's don't got gold much. if he's living in the woods, but <laughs> or he's hoarding it. Uh, he's got I don't pelts. Think that's how it's gonna work, Hyacinth. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I'm just brainstorming. Maybe like a couple pelts. Hey, pelts are valuable. Yeah, pelts are something. 
Uh, all right, all right. I'm, I'm going. Tired. Just I need to make sure the kids are okay. Right. I'm going. No, you did this. No, you didn't. Yeah, you, it's totally quick, on me. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna. I'm walking. I need that gun back, Mel, just in case. Oh, We're gonna leave yeah. the two expensive Over carts there. and Grifter's bone here. God damn it! <laughs> I can stay on guard duty. I just want to make sure the next time carts and carriages come through, they're not the kids aren't chucking rocks because someone may actually try to hurt them. Kirk, you know it's not your responsibility, right? Well, it wasn't, and I hurt a kid, and now I now I feel like it kind of is. Do, kids, do, kids do you all not hurt. communally? Yeah, I know they do, but like it's up to the adults to take care of the kids that are hurt, right? For the record, and there's. I'm there is an adult who is more than capable of taking care of them. They looked fine. I mean, we don't know that their uncle is any older than any of them. <laughs> That's actually a great point. Okay, I am all for this impulse torque. This is a great reason to go look for them. I support this. I will go with you at least. If nobody else wants to. Tell you what, I'm going to start walking into the woods. Anyone who wants to go. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't. Just just wait right here or or keep going. I mean, we can catch up at some point. Hey, Grifter's Bone, throw one of those papers if you get robbed. You still got one. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm staying here. I'm staying Inks with is, the band. Inks is also staying with the band. <laughs> All right. And wh where's Oz going? Uh, I'll oh, head uh, in with the group if the other two are staying. Okay. I'm going to yell after them. Hey, uh, follow this, and I'm going to send just like a smiley face <laughs> and full, oh, full God. and and throw it out to God. Kurt. <laughs> oh, that's a lot harder to do in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> the highest of takes off running. <laughs> yeah, Hope it helps. See you later. Don't die. Probably not going to help. There's a lot of trees, but I appreciate the gesture. Okay. Uh, those who are following, I've got you four and you back there. Okay. All right. Uh, I need a survival check from somebody. I will give assistance to whoever does it because I actually have proficiency in this. Left the two wisdom characters <laughs> Uh, I guess. We're trusting in my dice. All right. I can do it if you want to assist me. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Okay. Um, the underbrush is not so heavy that it actually is very easy to track children, though they are not making their, uh, like, path unclear. Um, it like in order to track them slowly and find them that would take some time but like you're following this bird and just running and you can keep your eyes on it well enough uh that you can see at least what you hope is actually this paper bird and not real birds uh <laughs> going deep into uh going deeper into the forest not very far though um a couple maybe a few maybe a few hundred yards um uh, so definitely not within the line of sight from the tree line, but, uh, but definitely farther away that like, if you wandered in by yourselves, you might not have found it very easily. Um, especially as it is a little bit further up the road than, uh, like directly off the path than where you were, the kids had like wandered up, uh, down, the, down the highway, some find a clearing, um, that is warm and uh and like surprisingly well lit there is there's sunlight that is coming through the trees uh uh in a brighter glow than you would have assumed um when you see this clearing like there is just there's soft um long grass that is in the yard a small penned area with some livestock um uh and this cottage with uh plaster walls and a thatched roof um and some smoke climbing out of the chimney 
uh, and curtained windows that you see ahead of you. And the uh, the paper bird goes up and the top of the house and then down the chimney. Yeah, at the edge of the glade, all caught. Uh, hello! Uh, the door swings open, and the, the oldest child, Peter, says, What do you want? He's standing we, at the doorway. We just want to talk clear. to your uncle. Yeah. He sort of huffs and closes the door a little harder than you'd like. Uh, you're all standing at the edge of the glade, is that right? Yeah, I kind of don't want to trespass on his what is clearly his land. Like <laughs> he's completely like terraformed this little glade. Like he's got his he's got his animals out here. It's clearly his land. Uh, a moment passes, and then the door opens more slowly, um, and the figure in the doorway is standing behind the oldest child, who is pointing at you guys and talking upwards at this figure who has um who has like beautiful tanned skin and dark curly hair um that just sort of hangs in in loose curls kind of across his forehead uh and a little overgrown um and like the beginnings of uh, a beard coming in um he looks rather young um but certainly, certainly an adult. Um, and he's dressed in similarly like these, these cheap work clothes, but they are uh, very well kept. And once the child is done speaking with him, uh, he turns his attention up to you and you can see uh, just white eyes. Um, but there's not an emptiness in them. It is, uh, uh, it is something else. And he, uh, and he pats the boy Peter on the head, and Peter stands in the doorway, uh, leaning on the door frame with his like hand against the side of the door to like keep himself framed in it. Um, and uh, and uh, Kian walks across the glade to you all. Uh, he appears to be barefoot, and he says to you as he gets closer, "Thank you for." Uh, helping my nephew, I understand that you may have encountered the children in not the best of circumstances. Yeah, I mean, they didn't like the carriages and were throwing rocks from the tree line. We my couldn't apologies. see what they were, so... Eh, nobody's hurt. They're from... Farther south and deeper into country lands, the, such artifacts are strange to them. Which of you offered to heal Kurt? That's me. Uh, he takes a step closer to you and extends his, uh, his hand, uh, which is completely unmarked of calluses. Uh, Clark just sort of stares at him for a moment. What? He... What? I I believe he'd like to shake your hand. He wants to shake your hand, yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, I'll reach up and shake his hand. Your The touch of his hand is warm, and you can feel it sort of creeping into your blood in a warmth that is uh, inviting and pleasant. Um, uh, and I'm going to give you a little thing. Do -do -do. See. 
right. Your kindness and patience with these little ones is very much appreciated. It is not often that they see strangers or really the true peoples of this world. I apologies, uh, my apologies for their behavior. Peter, and he calls over his shoulder and beckons for the boy to come and he sort of slouches forward. Um, and shuffles his way across the glade with his hands in his pockets. Um, and he puts a hand on the boy's shoulder and says, it is customary to offer genuine apologies when we have wounded other people, as they have demonstrated. And there's a bit of a tension in the boy's shoulders that kind of relaxes and and he says I'm sorry that we threw things at you guys we didn't know that there was people inside and we shouldn't hurt people's property even if there's no people inside and he looks up at his uncle who nods Hannah and Kurt also would extend their apologies, but the little one is resting, and I think Hannah understands better than some that she has done wrong. She looks at all of you. Is there anything else we can offer you? Any repairs that Peter ought to work on for, e for any of your carriages? I, I don't. I don't think so. There was there was no damage to my carriage, Haza. Front carriage, fine. I shake my head and like lean forward to like put my hand out to Peter. Kind of gives you a lax, uh, a lax armed handshake. That as soon as he like t grabs your hand, you can tell he's got a practiced, mm -hmm. uh, firm child's grip. I will like shake my head at him like do a very serious nod to him and say you are forgiven um good job protecting them though his his gaze kind of falls downward and he shuffles his feet if you or any of your companions are in need of anything as i said repairs or any such we would like to offer our assistance? I think we are okay. The, if, to be frank, we were worried it was bandits or some sort of more advanced problem. A distraction, maybe, while we were being set up for ambush? It, hard to say. Either way, uh, I think the matter is resolved. Uh, Torakir wanted to apologize for his part, and no reason to have bad blood in general, I think. He yeah. smiles, and it is a beautiful, lovely smile. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the kids also said something about you doing something about the carriages. I just wanted to make sure that, like the next set of people to come through wouldn't go through this, because they might not be as nice as us. <laughs> no, no, no. I think these children have expectations for power that is best left unsatisfied. He's like cocks ahead. We wish you well journeys and safe travels. And wherever you may be going, I pray you get there quickly. Throw a quick glance at, like, <laughs> at the other three. We good? Uh -oh. Hyacinth just, you know, bows very politely, 
Um, you've been a very gracious, uh, I guess not host. We haven't been hosted necessarily. Um, your glade is lovely. Um, we wish you well, and we shall be off, I suppose. He bows his head to you. Yeah, we we may be coming by this way on our way back from our destination, so. You should feel welcome to come by and say hello. Perhaps if we are fortunate, we should have enough for you all to have supper with us. Might be real nice. Say uh, Say hi to Hannah for me. He nods. Turn around and leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do at least. Okay. Uh, Torque. Yeah. You feeling all right? Feel fine. Why? Well, you were downright pleasant. It's unusual. When have I ever been a rude guest? You all yeah. have a very. I mean, it's a fair opinion of me. I have certainly earned it. I'd like to uh, visit Uncle Kian on our way back, would you? What? No, I don't give about. Uh, it's the it's the kids I'm concerned with. Gotcha. I mean, he seems fine. It's very nice. Perhaps maybe on the way back we uh, take a deer or something if he was concerned about having enough food and we can help provide and have a nice dinner or some such. It was kind of weird that his hands were unlined. Um, I think maybe they there was a lot of. There was a lot weird about that guy. Not gonna lie. It is times like these that I wish that I were maybe able to detect uh, extra planers. Um, you think he's something? Well, I mean, it is all just supposition, but um, he spoke a bit about prayer. His hand seemed unscathed for someone who lives in the woods. I don't know. Celestial of some kind, maybe. There's also the the eyes, you know, solid white. That the every blonde. human I've ever met with that is completely blind. But that man walked like everything was normal. So I mean, magic is weird sometimes. Mm -hmm. True, true. Magic but... does stuff. I don't know. Well, it doesn't seem like an enemy, and it might not be a bad idea to have him as a friend. Um, I see no reason, if we are able, not to take him up on his offer. Seems I'm not saying reasonable. we go out of our way or anything, but... I mean, yeah, if we happen to be through here around supper time, give it a thought, put it to a vote. You all hand uh, make your way back towards the uh, to the road and can see the uh, vehicles parked a little ways up and can catch up with uh, with those in the cart. I would have also liked to try and and see if I knew if the papers worked like that. If you send it send it to somebody that doesn't exist, does it just fail? Uh, yeah. Make me an Arcana check. Will do. I'm going to I'm going to uh, use guidance on myself because I don't trust my ability. All right, what'd you roll? Uh, no. nineteen plus two. Okay. So Twenty one. Yeah, since it has a basic functionality similar to sending, if the person does not exist, then the uh, paper would not fold. Okay. 
Sweet. But it would be written on and it would be it would be Expended. used. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Right. Yeah, really the broad strokes to the two of them. Ah. On the one hand, yeah, you were right. He was kind of weird, but he was also fairly nice. Did it How'd seem it fey in nature? Was it harmless? It, it seemed a very big grin. <laughs> it seemed pretty harmless, yeah. Yep. <laughs> At least to us. I... Wait, wait, wait. Wait, <laughs> Mel like puts a hand on Inks's shoulder. Was it Faye in nature? How this were we? Okay, Hyacinth. <laughs> um, did it? There's, did it? There's certainly no way to know for sure. There was that bit that he said about um, giving an honest, uh, like a, a a genuine apology when wronged, and that's kind of like a a Faye principle. But that's also just being a good person. Yeah, that's. I yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah. every civilized society. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, right, right. But you know, it holds a lot of weight with that's... the Fey for sure. It's caregiver um, stuff. My my hunch says celestial, but that's kind of out there. I, mm -hmm. I look at Inks unconfirmed. And in uh, oh damn it, I lost. <laughs> And in keeping with civilized society, we honor our pets. And she holds out her hand. <sighs> she flicks at you a platinum. Yes! <laughs> well, there's a rough plan to maybe uh, join them for a meal on our way back through. So that would be a time to see for sure one way or the other. I'm uh, getting that I'm getting that platinum back. She points <laughs> that ink. Ink sticks her tongue out. All right, we're ready to get moving. We're ready yep. to get moving. Yep. Do 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 do. Pack back up and back on the road. You guys have had a long fucking trip so far. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What day are we on? This was your. Day 21st Vectoriac. Five. Day five <laughs> of traveling. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. The rest of your day goes uh, significantly undistracted. And you are able to rest that night. Do we want to set a watch? Mm hmm. Are you volunteering, Doug? <laughs> uh, I'll volunteer as the last last watch. Okay, that's I'll the one she generally does. Second to last. Or I can offer to stay up. Uh, I'll be on watch for the first half of the rest. I, I promise I won't be doing any magicy writing stuff. I'll actually be on watch. <laughs> Okay. Oh. In that case, we didn't oh. actually set out to the seventeenth. This should Do I be have my day wrong. This should be the fifth day of traveling. Yes, this is your fifth day of travel. Hmm. I must but, have a long rip in there somewhere. Yeah, it, it's the fifth day of travel, but you also didn't leave town until late in the day. So you guys have a bit like you don't know when you'll be getting into town. There's but um, if if uh, Hazes calculations were accurate, then you have about a day left of travel. So Hyacinth is taking the first two watches. Is that right? Yeah. All right, I'll let you either roll once or twice if you want to roll for each watch. I know that sounds silly, but whatever. <laughs> but I'll uh, commit before you roll. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll roll twice. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Shit. Okay. Uh, and then Mel. Gotcha. Uh, I will be up on that watch as well. Okay. 
perception. Frick. <laughs> well, nothing comes and robs you tonight, as far as you can tell. And then inks. Hmm. All right, as you're getting up to watch, you think that maybe someone actually has gotten through your stuff, but no, that was probably just one of your uh, travel companions eating something in the middle of the night. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, you guys tracking your rations? What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> you will be waking up on the sixth day of your travel. Yeah. I figured out I was not counting the 17th when we set out as a full day. Ah. That's why I didn't know. Let me guess, we don't have any. I would hope I that do. you bought some. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, after last night. I should have oh. four left. No, you've got your rations. Okay. Anything else looks stolen? No, I'm just psyching you out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, well, I can't works. I can't have inconsistency when it like if I tell you to make if I tell you to do checks only on nights where night encounters happen. Then you know when a night encounter is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, in in any ways, you can all get back into the carriages and uh, on the road again. Each day, as you have been traveling, has felt like it has been getting incrementally warmer, especially come uh, noon and afternoon. It gets to that really unpleasant wintry day where uh, it's very cold come sunrise and sundown, but uh, but uncomfortably warm under the sun uh, during the day. And it is um, almost sunset, and you still know uh, by being on the highway, um, and having road signs and such that are available at crossroads, you're still some miles away from uh, a Hallbeck. You can hear, uh, as the sun is lowering, though, off the sides of the road, a sound of stone against stone in a rhythmic pattern that is off to the east, not very far. Um, there's perhaps some civilization nearby. Um, a few patches of cleared earth for gardening and brick buildings pitched against the wood just barely through the tree line, very much closer to the highway than you would expect. Um, yeah, uh, up to you what you'd like to do, either press on or uh, perhaps see if there's an uh, available inn where you guys can rest. So, if we travel through, will we reach there by evening? Um, like, it is currently closed. evening. It is currently okay. evening. Yeah. So, we'd have to travel through the night to get there. Potentially. Okay. Anyone feel like we're going slower than we should be? Just me. Okay. Got it. I mean, I've never been outside the city. Well, I mean, I've never been to Holbeck. It just, I don't know, for some reason, it feels like we're traveling slow. I mean, not including the fact that we stopped for a murder and then some kids. I mean, yeah. two separate incidents. I, you were all there. Why am I justifying <laughs> yeah. this? I mean, I'm still not used to the passage of time in this realm, so I don't know. Hey, anyone with a useful opinion think we're traveling slow? <laughs> Is there a check I need to do to, feel, right. to see if we're traveling slow? I, I mean, you have been on the road yeah. significantly, Haza. This is just how traveling sometimes yeah. is. You had an I approximate would say this guess. Is, this is fucking faster than horses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, we don't gotta stop to let the horses water and shit. Like, we just get to go straight through, which kind of rules. Mm -hmm. What do these yeah. things run on, anyways, for fuel? Do we have fuel for them? Dreams. Magic. <laughs> Magic! <laughs> Anyone want to make an arcana check? I would love Hell to. Yeah. That would be great. Check. 
Because if I need to give this thing some magic, I I (laughs) (laughs) The one who hates magic the most. (laughs) Runs on magic juice. Uh, Inks, as you've been bored sitting in the front uh, seat, and also with the place that you've grown up, you have a passing understanding of what this is. Um, And then Hyacinth, you have plenty of opportunity to, like, stick your head out, or even while you've been resting in the carriages to kind of give it a look. So... How this functions is it is runic magic, which in theory means that unless something catastrophic happens to the uh, front plate where everything is carved into, this will never fail. But it is electro, it is it is lightning charms that are placed into the stone that fuel something that is beneath the stone. If you were to crack into it, you might be able to look at that. Um, but these, uh, but these lightning runes are charging something within the machine that roll the, uh, the front axles. It seems somewhat irresponsible that they put the fragile break this and it all breaks thing right at the front of one of these. <laughs> they aren't war vehicles. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> Well, I guess just don't hit a tree. <laughs> don't ram directly into something. Mm-hmm. Right, I'll try. Yeah, not try to, to try to take it with the side if you can. <laughs> Good, drift into it. This is a carry. <laughs> yeah, drift into I it. I said if you can. <laughs> I, I could drift it, probably. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna need a puddle. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, if you, if you need to do that, go into the woods or something. What's wrong no, with you? I'm gonna need a puddle to do a drift. Hey, um, do some ice. Remember who owns the oh, cart? Actually, want, but if you need to do your business, go into the woods. Have you ever like made the cart go in a circle? <laughs> You just turn the wheel. Yeah, okay, but like, never mind. You're wondering why the travel feels longer. The travel has not been long. It's been fast. This is just <laughs> traveling just does this. That's why I, usually I you get like it, a. I didn't say it was longer. I said it felt longer. <sighs> we all you all need to work on your travel hobbies. You develop a hobby to do while you're traveling, assuming you're not, you know, driving like me and Mel. Like scrimshaw, some people do. Rope tying for fun. Uh, Hayes and I have been playing games this whole time. Yeah, I still think you're cheating. I don't know how you're cheating at rock, paper, scissors, but... I'm not cheating, I'm winning. You've won like 75% of the time, which... Feels wrong. <laughs> You're easy to read. Great. <laughs> All right, so are we gonna go look for this inn, or are we just gonna camp here? Do I do I need to start digging a hole? I mean, we should probably look for an inn. Although our track record with inns is is less than stellar. I mean, statistically, most inns aren't owned by crime bosses that have taken over <laughs> an entire city. Yes, so I but think sti- we might be fine. But statistically, most of the inns we travel to, or at least about 50%, are ones owned by crime bosses. So We've been to three inns. Okay, so like 30%. <laughs> that's not it's we've the only been to one size, since getting Hazen. on the road though right yeah, that's a hundred percent still accurate <laughs> oh my god can we pull <laughs> off I'll yeah yeah all. yeah <laughs> hey you did maybe a crime <laughs> that's why we're out here yeah, is you fucked that... up and bought some bad merch from right, someone, right, and right, now right. now we're traveling. Okay. Everybody, get all off right. my ass! I'm the one driving the front cart. All right, all I right. dictate the travel. I've been fucking crushing this. Fuck you all know, of you. You know what? You're I've, doing I've great. Heard, I've heard that sometimes uh, people need to develop a hobby when they travel. Yeah, you can't Dave when you have to Keo. spend both your fucking hands all the time. I've been playing rock paper scissors with my feet. 
<laughs> how? Okay, you know what? I'm not I... gonna. Um, that's 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 very impressive. Paper. But that would explain how you've okay. That explains. <laughs> I can that. make a foot of I foot a. You know what? Oh no. Okay. Yep. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, hole in the ground. Sounds wonderful. Do we, do we want to go for the inn? We'll go for a fucking inn. All so right. I, I think in. somebody needs a real night's sleep. <laughs> Getting up my ass. <laughs> I wasn't blaming you. <laughs> She's taking this awful personally, Hazel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gee, I just. <laughs> you guys find a small road to divert off of. And <laughs> Miles, please, I've got to read a statement. I've got to read it. I've got to read it out loud. I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh yeah all right uh there's um you you see mostly small residential places um that you're kind of passing by um but your attention is immediately taken from them to what is the source of the noise that you were hearing off the side of the road that maybe was getting under Hayes's skin <laughs> um uh it is a massive grindstone that is sent, set central to a field and is ceaselessly being turned at the hands of giant stone figures with immutable, immutable hewn features across their broad, colossal faces. Um, as the sun is going down, you see that there are uh, two dwarven figures who appear to be in the gardens of this uh, of this clearing. Um, they have dark skin and finely braided hair uh, and beards, and they are working. Um, and the sound of the carts catches their attention. They kind of uh, stand up where they are and uh, and smile and wave at you, uh, travelers. Um, just kind of give you a shout. Give you a shout. Where are you headed so late at night? It's kind of it's kind of a uh, late in the evening to be traveling. Well, we were looking for an inn. Um, do you own those? Oh, sure. Yes, yes. Uh, many people in uh, in these areas have the ability to afford something like this. Well, not afford, but we're very close to a. Uh, uh... Iraq's constructs. Uh, 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 do you know? Is that the place in Holbrook? Is that is that where you you all got your things? Uh, that is the name Silent of the. Static. That is the name of the location uh, of the uh, of the company. Yes, what they've told you. I was just confirming with them. Yeah. So uh, things like these are pretty widespread around here, then. Oh. If you have a good enough business to run, you can make use of them. They're very useful, yes? Interesting. Well, as I said, we're looking for either a place to spend the night, or... Oh. Well, um... Well, we have a spare room. I, I don't know how many people you have, but uh, we'd... Be happy to take you in. We're just actually bringing some things in now, if you'd like a place to rest. Uh, there's a lot of us, so... Yeah. That's no trouble. We've got a lot here. It's been a very good winter for us. I, I, I meant for the room, but... I mean... We can all squeeze in. <laughs> we can fit in the hole. I mean, I kind of just assumed Grifter's bone would take it again, and we'd be sleeping in the cart. There's not an inn anywhere close, or what? Oh, an inn How? nearby. Oh, no, uh, you're about 20 miles away from anywhere with, a, with an inn. How far is Holbrook? 20 miles-ish. Hold okay, back. So it hold back, that's the place. <laughs> uh one of them puts down the basket of things that are that's in their hands and dusts their hands on their apron. He uh makes his way forward uh towards like the uh the edge of the fence. Um 
and, and says, my name's Thede. Uh, uh, we'd be happy to take company if you're looking for a place to stay. Name's Haza. Um, do you mind if we talk about it for a second? Certainly. Uh, certainly. Yeah, I'll hop down from the cart for a second, walk around to the back where most of our people are. Ew, I was going to spell that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with staying in the cart if you just want Grifter's bones to take the room. I mean, do we feel like stopping here, or do we want to try to push on? Uh, It'd be a late night if we push on, but we could probably do it. 20 miles, if I've been doing my math, that's like seven more hours? Yep. Are you up for it, Hazel? Huh? I mean... I think it's either here or we dig a hole in the ground somewhere. And here sounds fine with me. I we think I'd be fine. See what for... our Sorry, yeah. I think I'd be fine for a little for probably quite a lot lot while longer, but well, I can try and push it if you feel like you can. I'll leave it to the group. I could go either way. What do our employers want? Uh, they they want to rest. Oz is unloading his stuff from the cart. <laughs> we'll see who can fit anybody else we can either okay all right so Thede and Hilda as she's introduced uh, will take you to their uh, little domicile uh, let's see do I have the door open I think I do yes I do um they indicate the um uh that like it's a kind of small room i'm just going to start dragging people into it um but they have uh some space and like what presents is like uh, a mattress that can be unfolded as well for a little bit of extra comfort um but they're they're willing to uh share their space with you and bring in a lot of uh hard uh hearty uh root vegetables and some uh home brewed beer uh for you all if that is something you're interested in oh um, yeah yeah they uh, make some effort to make you comfortable as surprise guests you just don't get travelers here very often it's very exciting to see some new faces around here not a lot of traffic between Holbeck and where the hell did we just come from? Barrel. Well, well, there's plenty of people who are on the road, but uh, little communities like this one don't see that many outside faces. Most people are right on their way to Holbeck uh, without needing to stop. Or wanting to stop. One of them kind of clarifies. <laughs> How long have you lived here? Well, uh, Thede got this, uh, got this land from his father, um, so better part of 230 years? Most of our marriage. <laughs> that is a long time. Uh, Athene sort of shrugs. Um, well, it was harder to work this uh, work this area before there were the constructs, and we have uh, we have Erox constructs incorporated to thank for the uh, for the assistance. How long ago did you get the constructs then? Well, they've been addition to the land for better part of uh, thirty years now, I think. Something about that. 
Your rocks construct. Have uh, if... you ever had any issues with them? Uh, break down, go rogue. <gasps> Nothing like that. No, they're they've been fine machines. Just took some use. Took some getting used to. They can take orders, but they take orders pretty directly and accurately. If it's not rude to ask, how much does each one of them cost roundabouts? Uh, Feedy sort of whistles and says, well, I'll put it this way. Um, I used to have about four more acres of land. Uh... And that was the first uh, deposit. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, from the looks of it, you've done well enough to get three. Uh, he he nods and sips his drink. Do you know of anybody else around here that's had, like, weirdness with them? Weirdness? No. No, no they do what they're told. They, it's sort of the whole purpose. Yeah, I guess so. Well, if, if there's anything we can do to make you more comfortable, please let us know. This you, uh... Um... Thank you. You're familiar with uh guy lives back the way we came, Kian, a couple of kids. Uh they both I feel like this head. is a long shot, but I you know, they're the first person we've run into since we ran into them. All right, never mind. Yeah, it's pretty clear they don't yeah. It's not even a feigned okay, there's not any connection there. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it is a long shot. Long but... shot. <laughs> All right, anything anyone needs to do before taking their long rest? Okay. Uh, uh, are you... Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just... Uh, I'll spend two hours of my time awake uh, transcribing a spell. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh... Yeah, in, in in as as you know, you're watching people settle down um, for the evening. Hyacinth, you uh, see one or pe one or two people uh, get up and find their way out of the building for a little bit, and then come back, just kind of wandering around and settling down. Um, uh, but other than that, nothing terribly interesting. Um, silence when she like comes back seems very surprised to see you like still up and awake, but just kind of. Uh, delicately makes our way back into the room before going back to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'll just give a polite nod and continue with my work. Okay. And the next morning, um, most of you are treated to what is more or less the leftovers of soup and vegetables from the night before for breakfast, so you do not need to uh, reduce your ration count. Um, and then you are safely set on your way with the uh, gratitude from strangers. Hi, Synth. I will give you gift of alacrity this morning. That's very kind. Thank you. Okay. I will slip, like, three gold underneath a bowl. <laughs> All right. And back onto the road you go, back onto the highway, and rolling along for a few more miles. Um, it is about midday uh, when you face a city in its own quiet boom of industry, with small squat houses and foundries dotting the foothills of the gentle mountains that shield the city from the cold of the north. 
bigger than the thatched villages you've been passing, but nowhere at the scale of the metropolis you've come from, the buildings are almost entirely brick and stone, hewn from the open quarries in the mountainsides. Uh, doo -doo -doo, I've got a map somewhere that's this. There we go. Um, and the signs and such have directed you to Holbeck, a, uh, a small city with a river cutting through it from the mountains. Um, it is, I say city in terms of scale, like you're, we're not talking about a walled citadel of any kind. This is just uh, larger than a town is what you're dealing with. You can see that there are... Hi. Um, <laughs> uh, trafficked streets. You can see that there are merchants, mercantile, uh, and uh, and taverns and such that seem to be actively busy. Um, and uh, mostly uh, common-looking individuals who are, without extravagance, uh, dotting the dotting the roadways, um, accompanied occasionally by uh, constructs of various scales and materials um, as well, carrying their shopping or uh, walking close by as guardians or some such uh, servants. We see any carriages like ours? One or two, but this is clearly the sign of uh, of a, an extreme wealth as well as um, what's the word? Uh, exportation. Did they have constructs like pulling carts here, like in lieu of an yes, automatic cart? They're, they just... Yeah, like some rickshaws being. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess as we like cruise in, I'll lean down and uh, like call to Grifter's bone and be like, "Gonna need directions here." Uh, over the over the river, uh, and you're pointed towards uh about the midway point through town. There is a bridge, uh, that crosses out of the city. It looks like you can even see as you're making your way on the road that the river seems to be the border of the town. Um, but you are not, you're not stopped upon your entry, um, but getting to the river, uh, the riverway uh, and the bridge, you are uh, halted first by some uh, constructs and then by the, uh, I guess, <laughs> not a very good word, uh, just, just guards uh, who can verbalize inquiries um asking what your business might be uh, upon leaving the city and heading this direction heading towards the quarries is what they say we are uh here i guess on a matter of an official investigation do you have any documentation I can't remember if Oz actually has any documentation. We have the Sending Stone. Do we? I don't think you do. Do we not? No, we don't. Never mind. Uh, I'll shake my head, but I'll like tap the cart and be like, "We're here with a well with a band called Grifter's Bone. Um, they bought a <laughs> construct that uh." I had a bit of a malfunction. Do you do you pull it out or anything? I wait to see what like Grifter's Bone does at the moment. Uh, their ability to like help you in this is kind of limited. Um. Then yeah, I'll hop down and like take the the guard like back around to the back and open it up. Okay. Yeah, that's contract we got stuck there. Yeah, that's about the extent of what they would be able to do for you as well. Yeah. Uh, um uh this is a a, a matter of pri uh, small investigation as they look over it and can verify what this is. Um uh before they say do you have an appointment set with the uh with the master of the house? No. Do we need do to we... make one? Yeah. If you don't want to deal with a the secretary, then yes. And one of the, the other one kind of laughs. That seems fine, right? Would you pass a message to the master of the house for us? 
We are uh, more city officials than in than in his employ. I suppose we'll talk to the secretary if that is all right. It would be your funeral. Uh, and he shuts the door of the cart. <laughs> Noted. And thank you for the warning. Is there anything else we need to pass, or...? You should find yourselves under inspection upon your entry uh, to the facility. All right. I presume we'll be inspected upon exit as well? Correct. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, and these city officials let you pass. You can see that they're on this road that you are now on, a uh, divergence that lead in different, in varying degrees of uh, construction um, roadways and paths that lead up into the mountains and into like open quarries and uh, and caverns and mines. Um, but the major road that uh, leads you up to please don't <laughs> um, uh, that leads you up to this stone edifice, this uh, this facility of incredible utilitarian construction um looms over there are none uh there are there are no towers watches or anything that inspect you on your way up to the building but the gates ahead are shut is there any kind of like I don't know, like rope or bell or anything, or like construct on duty. <laughs> uh, why don't you make me a persuasion or perception check? I like nudge, elbow, inks. <laughs> I don't see shit. <laughs> yeah, this is an unscalable fortress. Don't do that. What do you want me to do about it? Look for a way. Look for anything. Uh, I will try and look also. Yeah, can I make a check? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oof, ouch. <laughs> Yikes. Mel, you don't see... You don't all... You likewise don't see anything. Um, uh, inks, you can recognize uh, two very interesting points um one of them is a small glyph that is etched into the stone work to the uh uh to the side of the door the other one you almost don't see it but uh is another marking that is a different sigil that is sitting at the top of the door frame in the keystone of the door oh i see those two things uh we may need hyacinth yeah, we're going to need Hyacinth. Just knock on the door. All right, Inks knocks. <laughs> I just played Banks loudly. Uh, the, the mark to the side of the door lights. Oh, God. And... <laughs> And you hear a voice coming from it that says, Do you have an appointment? Not exactly. Then you should set an appointment before entering. Sure, do I do that with you? <sighs> One moment. Uh, you hear some... Uh, <laughs> what sounds like paper shuffling and then the next appointment is in two ten days uh and in three days time all right um i'm gonna step in here my name is haza uh great yeah we are here with um some defective merchandise from you what i presume to be your employer it is not the fact that it is defective that will be of interest to him, I think, but how it is defective. It's impossible defective. for any of these artifacts to be defective. If they did something fucked up, that's something that they were told to do. Uh, 
let's put it this way. If one of your constructs here spontaneously did decide to do something, if it was Harder. instructed to do so, how, what is the distance it can be instructed to do so from? There's a pause. If there is a consideration that there should be something unsavory done with any of these objects, I don't think I should be telling you exactly what that term of instruction should be. Very well. Hesa, just, just explain that there was murder, Hesa. They Jeez. murdered people. A lot the, of people. The damage is already done. Like. Including trying to murder the people that they were working for. Well, and in addition... The people that they were working for are a very popular musical group, Grifter's Bone. Uh, they tour rather extensively. Um, I would think that uh, a business such as yours would rather not have negative connotations about their products spread both throughout Luskin and by one of the preeminent touring bands. Uh, around these days we're here more well both as a courtesy to you and as part of the luskin investigation to make sure that what you say is in fact true but you being the experts you're the only ones who can confirm that and so getting an appointment as soon as possible so we can make sure that uh, yeah. the reputation of Iraq's constructs remains intact. It's of the utmost importance, you see. I need a group persuasion check. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I have guidance? Uh, no. No, because the only person who's in reach of you is yourself, and you haven't said a whole lot. <laughs> That's well, true. I mean, you yeah, like, I mean, you could cast it on yourself, but I, I guess, but like, it's not gonna do you much good. However, I am going to roll a d6 as bardic inspiration that is given to you the group check by the band. All dead on in the middle. I was gonna say, I have the highest. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end up with a 15. Tyler, do you want me to roll for you? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I don't have an inspiration to spend. Oh, well, that helps. <laughs> um, I will also use one of my uh, fortune of the many to add three to my persuasion check. So that's a 17. Okay. There's a pause, and then the rune above the uh, above the door begins to glow, and begins to hum, and the light of it intensifies and swells, and then blinks out, and suddenly you don't see the mark anymore, uh, inks. And then there's a thud in the lock as some bolts are moved and the doors uh, are pulled upwards and open. Please leave your carriages outside the facility. And uh, you hear the sounds of uh, uh, wood clacking together as some wooden constructs make, their, make themselves uh, visible to you and wait for you to disembark. Are our yeah. carriages safe here? Or are they under your protection, I should say? Uh, the valets will transport them to somewhere appropriate and designated for safekeeping. Very well. That's all I need you. to know. Does anyone think that it would be important for us to keep our uh, uh, evidence here? No, I was, was going to say, we probably want to pull the 
pull you 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 might want us to pull the 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 unit in question in right off the cart rather than have that go with the valet. Yes, that would be preferred. Thank you. You, you got it. You want to um, do that disc thing? Yeah, I'll ritually cast tensor loading disc. <laughs> you take ten minutes right now to cast. I didn't one. prepare it. I probably should have. <laughs> There's um, they got the big constructs. Maybe they maybe they want to bring it in. Somebody should bring it in. No, okay. We'll just, we'll just wait. Up. We'll, no, this is a good game. The door is once again shut for the duration of this ritual, um, and it is required that you uh, contact her again once the uh, ritual has been uh, completed. Uh, we're going to take our 15-minute break and be back at a quarter after uh, as the doors are once again opened to you and you can bring the uh, dis- the partially destroyed, uh, definitely broken, defunct uh, golem into in for, uh, in for inspection. Yay!
because I just remembered you and I talking about it the other day and yep. how it work with how it works. I just want to, if I can yeah. be helpful, love to be helpful. Absolutely. Can't hurt. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So you guys have crossed the threshold of the, uh, of the corporation of, uh, Erox constructs. You are seeing now for the first time, um, a, building of what is proper industry this is not something frankly any of you would have any reason to have seen anything like before and your first steps in are uh not that interesting <laughs> you immediately are greeted with um just what is a lobby and other people who are waiting and other people who have what appears to be malfunctions that they wish to inquire about but it is the case that there is a um, that there is a golem that is made of wood, one of these smaller, lighter ones that has taken uh, one of your, taken your carriages already and taken that around um, where else you could not imagine, but not following you certainly. One of these wooden constructs is uh, apparently guiding you. Uh, you are instructed to pass by the other people who are in line much to their chagrin um i say line informally but out out of the lobby and into a darkened chamber that upon entering is lit it is a stone room with very little furnishings except for a wooden slab on a metal table um that the uh that the construct just puts a hand on top of. Uh, you kind of have an indicator that this is where your defunct object is supposed to be deposited. I will try. I don't. Hmm. Since this loading disc has just been following behind me 20 feet, I will try to walk 20 feet past this thing <laughs> in hopes that since this loading disc arrives at the thing and tries to pass over it. Uh, the room is not that big, unfortunately. That's what I <laughs> you like twist and back it up. <laughs> You can't really control this thing. I mean, I don't know. We might be able to try to push it. Um, Just go as far as you can, and people can carry the 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 bits the last way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People or golems, whichever. I mean, hopefully golems, because I ain't. I. I mean that Same. that table's taller than me. I'm not gonna be able to do shit. Good luck. <laughs> while you're left wondering uh what how you should deposit this uh the remains um a stone wall opens to reveal a a small uh passageway through which the, you certainly hadn't seen before through which a uh turtle individual who's quite large um and has very slack and tortoise like features um uh creeps their way into the room, little glasses upon the bridge of their nose, um, and uh, and begins looking, uh, and is reading over notes on a clipboard, um, and does not seem to notice any of you at first, does not even make eye contact with any of you before it walks over to the disc. Uh, he puts his hands on the uh, golem itself, and with a great amount of strain, um, hauls the object by his own strength onto the table for inspection uh, and begins removing pieces of metal from it uh, to begin his investigation. It is a couple of, of quiet moments from him before, uh, before he says out loud to no one in particular, so what is it that happened, exactly? According to witnesses, page. 
According to witnesses, there was uh, some green light that started spilling out of them. Uh, black gas smelled kind of weird, probably like sulfur. They they think smelled like gunpowder. They said I I, I guess that they they were spilling the sulfur that uh, these things used to then burst into flames. So the golems coughed and there was fire. Then they picked up a piece of piping off the wall and started trying to kill people. Hmm. Uh, there's a sharp crack as w- from within the chest of this open vessel. Um, the turtle retrieves a cylinder of steel that is blackened um, and broken from the looks of it and uh, and setting it aside um could i i would like to cast detect thoughts um i'm not really trying i'm not trying to like do it subtly or anything but i'm not like probing into mind i just want to kind of like monitor and like follow along with what this guy's doing okay uh you pick up that it is ret- that he is retrieving an object that is functionally the canister that holds such a similar chemical uh a a compound that is not incendiary by nature but is a defense mechanism that is distributed in uh golems of this manufacture gotcha i'm just going to keep it up and just you know Try to follow along and understand what's what you know his process, and then also just keep an ear out for like, you know, is this person trying to be deceptive? Though I just checked for some reason, I was thinking this lasted ten minutes. It only lasts a minute, so I probably won't get much. That is correct. Yes. Um. Oh. Uh. uh you initially catch the thought that it is the case that these uh that golems do not malfunction they 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 only follow orders um uh and then just before the spell ends there is the thought that uh these things must have uh acted exactly as instructed um uh he sets his equipment down and uh and says this is a very interesting case i think perhaps it would be best then if we were to bring this to the director himself although he doesn't see customers he's a very paranoid individual I'm sorry, what's if, what's your name? Igmi. Igmi. Igmi, perhaps you could tell us a bit more about um how these things work. Um we've heard a few people tell us that, you know, these things only do exactly as instructed, and sometimes if those instructions are uh taken very literally, it might lead to uh a less favorable interpretation. Um who? How does the chain of command for that work? Whenever y'all construct them and then pass them along, what's the process for designating who can command them and who cannot? Uh, could you make me a persuasion check? Oh. You're asking for trade secrets. Persuasion. Oh, I actually am trained in that. That's nice. That's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can do anything about that. You do have an inspiration if you want to use it. Oh yeah, I got one earlier. I just didn't. I was in the other room, so I didn't write it down. That's <laughs> better. <laughs> it is the case that we, without revealing too much have a process of inscription that provides each of these constructs with the designation for who it is they should always answer to. Some of those names will always be scribed, such as uh, certain members of this cooperation. 
but primarily it is the customer that is ordering it that receives such uh, specific lettering. Mm -hmm. And would that be something that y'all would be able to check and see, you know, I'm not needing to know how or why, but if we could uh, procure like a list of the names of authorized commandants, that would be useful in our investigation. This is could be done, but this would only be information I would be allowed to reveal to those whose names are inscribed. Indeed. Uh, the owners are with us. He nods and uh, and uh, then politely asks that each of you write down your name on his clipboard so that he has a sheet of reference. <laughs> To accommodate? Yeah. Yeah. If what? <laughs> he is going to compare the names that you are about to give to the names he will find inside the golem. Yeah, my name's not on there. You don't need it. Yeah, the the owners are over there. If you want their names, <laughs> so that you can make sure to give them the list that they will almost certainly right you, i mean you said you said you can't tell us you want to talk to them you want to talk to them <laughs> uh yeah there's a, there's an exchange hold on buddy these cookies are still hot you can have one in a minute um there's an exchange between grifter's bone and uh this artificer um before he goes to the head of the construct and begins unscrewing the faceplate on it. Uh, and uh, just inside the, um, on the backside of the steel plate that is the, uh, the face of it, um, uh, he reads over, like, he silently reads over the names uh, and then indicates that yes, it is the, uh, the owners here. And of course, there is the, uh, Direct creator, not myself, but another artificer in our employ, and the master creator himself, the director. All right, and you said we should talk to this director, right? Yeah, a case could be made to discuss this with him personally, but as I said, he's a very peculiar individual. Doesn't see people very often. All right, well, you're the one that said we should talk to him, so... I, I feel like we're not the ones you need to convince. You say... Could you repeat for me exactly what it is that happened? You said it exuded gas and it became incendiary. Is that... Yeah, according to uh, the some of the stagehands that were, that were there at the time, the... Um, there was some sort of green light that swelled out of them. Uh, then some sort of some sort of black gas started pouring out of them. They said it smelled like gunpowder. Uh, and then uh, the golems, and, I, and I'm quoting here, they coughed. Air quotes. Uh, and that's how the fire started. They, whatever gas around them ignited. They uh, they went over to the wall, pulled some pipes off the wall, and then went onto the stage to uh, well rampage and start murdering patrons. Don't forget the foul smell. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the gas. The the sulfur smell that we all smelled was almost certainly the because they said it smelled like gunpowder, with which I am reasonably like a completely normal person familiar uh, um, and also it was more than one this is the one that we got to keep to bring to you guys but there was more than one hmm. golem as well as some rope constructs that w followed the same protocol presumably not necessarily the gas and things for the rope golems but they all went rope yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really good point. I have a question, Igmi. Um, when you designate an owner, are these constructs designed to protect those owners? 
they are functionally designed to do whatever the owner requests, but this particular model is specialized for defensive measures, yes. And could you instruct them to not defend you or to actively try to harm you if you were the owner? Or are they not allowed to do that to the owner? It is within the capabilities of these objects to do such. Although any such violence would be the responsibility of the owners, not the manufacturers. In addition to the violence that they began to pursue on the people in the crowd in conjunction with the rope constructs, um, they were working in concert. They made no effort to try to protect their owners. They were almost certainly going to attack their owners. Indeed. I mean, before we intercepted, yes, but we can at least speak to the fact that they certainly were not doing anything to help them or to protect them in any way. And they were in active danger. He takes some more notes and then goes back towards the wall that had the, uh, the false door. Before, uh before placing his hand upon one of the stones and rather than the door opening, a um, an illusory field uh, produces itself um, that, he, uh, that he speaks to and he says, this is actually significantly high priority, sir. I think you should, I think you should come down and see it. Uh, you hear from the, from the illusory field a response that says, I will not be leaving. Thank you. Sir, there were a number of people who were killed. Perhaps this is of significant importance to you to take the time to investigate personally. <coughs> Igmi, should there be any such incidences, I would handle it personally. But it is not the case such opportunities often come our way. If you'll please excuse me, I am busy. You are dismissed for the for the time. Uh, Igmi's uh, little illusion falls. He seems a little confused. Um, uh, and then he begins uh, continuing the disassembly process. Um, uh, he says to you, um, you are welcome to wait here, or you can find yourselves outside. Uh, if the director bothers to take the time for this, it is um, his will. But uh, for now, we should do all we can to prevent this from happening again in the future. Mm. Uh, wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll be busy. You are allowed to stay here, or you are allowed to make yourselves comfortable elsewhere. Uh, I would like to stay and just observe. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, as this thing is taken apart, you'll see that there is not... Um, there is a core to this thing that is made of still steel. Uh, although it is not so much a a uh, ton of parts to this. Um, they all seem to be um, sturdy pieces under a very heavy frame. Um, after a time, the uh, the whole body is taken apart significantly. Um, and Igmi lets you know that this room is uh, under surveillance, uh, but that he will be back shortly, and he leaves the room. Uh, through that uh, through that false door. Um, this process has taken a significant amount of time, um, but as soon as that false door is shut, uh, there is suddenly a hatch in the ceiling that opens and light spills down, um, followed shortly by a figure that just drops into the room with a thud and a clatter, and as like a person who is wearing a lot of layers of clothing uh, and many pieces of steel, 
just crashes to the ground uh, in the middle of the floor uh, immediately and fall and just uh, lay, falls prone <laughs> in the room. <laughs> You okay? That was quite an entrance. Uh, this person seems very um disoriented and and and, and hurt as he kind of groans and and gets up, um, uh, before looking upwards and from a device on his wrist, uh, presses some keys and the door shuts. Uh, and then he goes to the wall where the secret wall, or the secret door had been, and places his hand against it. Um, you hear what sounds like a uh, locking thud of something freezing in its place. Um, uh, this gentleman is about five ten, uh, with with very deep skin and uh, twisted hair. Uh, he's wearing a what looks like a dirty bathrobe um and a monocle over his eye that is uh shaped out of steel and an illusion that hangs over the lens um he looks at all of you um briefly and he says i was an observation it, it is the case, as you've said, that this is something that has been an irregular occurrence, um, an act of unsolicited violence, and has breached the natural order of defending its owner. Is that correct? I'm sorry. Who the fuck are you? I'm assuming I... he's the director? Referee Irox. I am the director here at uh, Irox Constructs, yes. Then yes, that is more or less the case. There are some particulars, but why the fuck is the director falling out of the fucking ceiling? Because there are people within these walls who have invasive incantations and rituals, and they have been trying very desperately to get into secrets that they do not have the rights to. That gentleman you spoke with earlier was one of them. Me? Uh, Wait, I mean, we've only spoken to like two people here. I know it seems rather sudden and abrupt, but this is not the first, nor will it be the last occurrence of these of these constructs uh, behaving the way they have, unless it is unless it can be that I find someone who is capable of assisting me in uncovering what is causing this problem. I don't mean to startle you, and under other circumstances I would have had you under much more thorough inspection, and probably not would not have come in uh, as I had, but we had uh, little time. The farther this thing became disassembled, the more, un more likely it would be that you would not be able to find what may be misplaced within it. Then proceed with the investigation, and we'll talk after? Yeah, you You're do what you gotta time. do. Yeah. To be clear, you say these things acted in defiance, did not act in defense. And these are the owners. And he points to uh, the band members. Yes, and yes. They worked in concert with other constructs who were throwing victims to them for them to slaughter. And they did, in mass. While their owners there nearly burned to death on the stage. From the so fire is, the constructs caused. Yes, it is both things. Both that they did not try to help their owners, and they actively pursued violence in concert with another set of different constructs. And who all were the eyewitnesses to this? All all of us, us here. All of, all of them. us. Them? And... There's probably a dozen or so people in Luskin. A lot of the victims were able to be brought back, but not all of them. Excellent. Um, he once once again interacts with the pad upon his wrist. Um, 
and then very, very abruptly and suddenly this room is severed in half by stone uh, with Grifter's bone on one side of a stone wall and you and him and the construct on uh, on the same side. Um, you can hear some faint shouting and disoriented free, uh, panicking from the other side of the stone wall. Um, and, and he says, uh, and he says, you were witnesses, you are not owners. And he's looking at each of you very intently, like waiting for a confirmation. Indeed. Yes. Yes. We fought them as well. Each of you, please make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, boy. My weakness. <laughs> I wouldn't happen to be seeing a spell getting right. cast. Would yes. I? Yes. Um, it is actually a spell. I would like to just try to counterspell it. That's just what you're doing? No, third level counterspell. Okay. Uh, that counters this spell. I'm sorry. If you would like to cast something non-harmful, you will need our permission first. There is something that is within the walls of this facility that has been trying to take something from me. I very much need as much clarity as possible. So what is it you're trying to get from whatever it is you tried to do? I need to see what it is that you saw. I need to know what it is that happened exactly from each of your own perspectives so that I may more accurately deduce what it is that is actually instructing these constructs. This is not, as I said, not the first and it shouldn't be, and hopefully will be the last. Start here, because not only did I fight him, I got the eyewitness from the stagehands that actually saw them go berserk. Like, saw, was, saw the whole thing start. I was pretty close the whole time to one of the big ones. Okay. Uh, you feel what is uh, the presence of something peering into your mind, and it feels like tiny little pinpricks uh, just beneath the surface of your skin. Um, uh, and you can see, actually, with Torek, it is alone satisfactory, um, um, uh, the eyewitness account is accurate. Um, although, like, you begin feeling for... Okay, Miles, that's the last one. Something that is, like, looking further into your past, Torek. That is looking a little bit farther than you thought it was going to. Uh, looking into like the the time prior to that, and and maybe the day before that, and then the day before that, and it's very brief, uh, but it's sudden. It's very invasive. All right, keep on mission there. Yeah, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. resist it. Can... Okay. Um. He says to you, how long have you known these people? This crew? Correct. Like, the 10 day, maybe more for, maybe a little bit more for most of them. I know Mel for a while. And in any of that time, has any of them displayed a behavior of erratic physical change or a or a loss of memory of significance um any of you lost memory i mean we all went into the into the um we were all in luskin we all went into the uh the tower, the, 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 the tower, the brotherhood. Yeah, what's the name of the fucking tower? Someone. The host tower? That's the one, the host tower of the arcane. Yeah, um, lost memories. That I know of, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, I think I, that's I, the I kinda wanna we wouldn't know if we've lost them, but... Exactly. I can inspect for lost memories if it would be a comfort to any of you. Yeah, it's sure, not a ahead. kind process. Yeah, it, not not gonna lie, not comfortable, but 
would have appreciated a little heads up, but you know. I'm good, I think. If I can not. Could you make me a persuasion check? <laughs> Rolling so low tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a skeptical look from him towards you. Um, and he says, anyone not willing to submit to investigation will not be privy to any more information I may be able to divulge. You can look in my head then, but can you keep it to the last, the, the relevant bit here? Uh, who is all willing to submit to investigation? Me. Did uh, he answer if he'll keep it to the relevant information? Uh, no. Oh. Yeah, that's that sounds a little... I don't know about that. <laughs> he said he's looking for lost memories, so... Okay, sure. Yeah, Oscar will submit in addition, he will explain, uh, depending on how he looks at it, I've either gained or lost 11 years recently, so that might complicate matters. <laughs> uh, as, he, as he is providing inspection to you, Oz, uh, he explains that it sounds as if it is only you have been biologically aged, uh, but you mm -hmm. should not be experiencing any other... Uh, effects, and he can confirm such. Wonderful to hear. Submit to investigation. Okay. Ditto. You, Hazel, you are like the third down the list. Mm -hmm. um, and upon submission, um, very shortly into this, like, minute duration, um, he, uh, just sort of stops immediately. Um, and you kind of know exactly where his train of thought had gone, or li like the, the train that he had been following had gone. Um, and he is frozen for a moment uh, before he says out loud to you, um, but still very much still focusing on what it is you are thinking. He says, um, uh, where do you come from? Where do you go? <laughs> Luskin. Where have you been? A number of places. Luskin was the first place you remember. Yes. You are helpful. And I try to be. And then he, you can feel that in the like inspective force upon your mind cease uh, as he says, I don't know what it is in its entirety, but there are things that have changed in my facility. The people, the craftsmen, they still maintain the skill work and abilities of the people that have that I have hired personally, in, investigated thoroughly. But there is something they speak sometimes synchronously and know things faster than they used to. There is something that they are looking for here. I can only imagine that it is the completion of my knowledge. Could I uh, send a message uh, to... Let me check. Uh, one foot of stone. I think wall's thicker than that. I'm going to use... Oh, wait a minute! This is not the character that has sending. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. 
He says, um, without divulging too much of what is the trade secrets of my work, the texts that are the script of ritual that invites substance to a construct, something that allows them to move, mobility, is a protected art. Keep my own records and my own documents, frankly, within plain view of many of my associates, simply because should any of them touch them without my presence or knowledge, each book itself would be set ablaze. Not be able to restore any of the information inside. However, all of this information is information I have long since committed to memory. As such, I keep upon myself artifacts that prevent the probing, which I did not allow any of you the benefit of the doubt for resisting. It is, however, the case that it would appear at least one of you here has at least a basic understanding of these creatures that I only presume be what has infiltrated my facility so thoroughly. And if she has enough understanding of the sort of trouble that such a creature such as her may cause, perhaps it is the case that I might be able to trust you. I had been hoping that perhaps on their return home, the guild that calls themselves the Hand of Light might be someone I could afford to call upon for assistance. However, seeing as you are here, and I have reason enough to believe that you all, or at least you, and he looks at you, at you again, Hazer, have an understanding of the severity of the situation. Perhaps there is something that we can negotiate. Before we proceed, you then believe that you have been infiltrated by changelings such as myself is the crux of your position, yes? Shapeshifters, at least, mm -hmm. or something akin to it. I can tell you that, from my knowledge of myself, I don't gain I information in the infiltration process. I don't know any more about the person whose face I take. Perhaps Not it is how it works. unique to these particulars, then, that, that is an ability that they might possess. And it is... Gratifying to hear your honesty. Very well. Um, the problem is that if if they can work in concert, like you said, but they possess abilities like I do, it's very hard to find them out beyond the idiosyncrasies you're talking about. There's no real direct way to force us to... I guess, resume our base shape? At least not to my knowledge. Also, you mentioned having the ability to probe like you just did. If you probe into somebody's mind, you surely can tell if it's somebody familiar and someone not, correct? Then it should have just been a matter of probing all who work for you. It is the case that there is... There is an ability that I have that may allow me to see, at least for gaps in memory, that you may be left incomplete. But this has only gotten me so far, and I'll admit that I am not the young, young individual that I used to be that had the capability of defending themselves in mass. It has been on more than one occasion that I found myself overwhelmed by these present thoughts of invasive fields, things trying to find their way in and learn things they should not, but being fortunately unable to. Uh, and his hands uh, sort of cross and one of his hands starts messing with one of the fingers, on, or one of the rings on his finger. A question. When you searched my memories, did you see the before? part there. The part I'm not 
I don't really have a lot of memories for. I could attempt again if you are interested, but I saw what I needed to know. I had um, knowledge that I don't think was mine to have. Uh, uh, to be ready to be the daughter. So um, if it's useful, you can go, uh, if you could see past there. Um, he nods and he says, if you are willing. Uh, just as he says that, though, however, this spot where the um, secret stone door is, um, you hear, like, thudding from on the other side of it. Um, and he sort of jumps and turns towards the table and grabs a couple of pieces, including the, uh, the blackened steel canister, uh, and then taps his foot on a tile of the, st of the floor, and a trap door opens. Um, and he says, I, I cannot stay here. Where do we meet you, then? I should find you, I should have you brought here again at another time. But for now, assume that, um, all has transpired uneventfully, and that I have dismissed you and said that, um, this, and he holds up the part. Uh, he seems a little bit lost in his own thoughts. Um, and he says, I'll take it back for repairs. We will probably be in town then. I don't know for how long. Very well. Uh, and he drops into the floor. You hear him thud against another floor level down below <laughs> and groan. Um <laughs> As the trap door shuts uh, immediately, and the stone wall that's in the room uh, drops down, and the uh, and the uh, it, it, it false wall opens up again. Um, uh, the Grifter's Bone band members are uh, incredibly confused and bewildered, and Igmi comes back in um, uh, rather hurriedly. Um, as uh, as soon as the door opens and begins inspecting the table. I believe our business is concluded here for now. Did you speak with the director? No, it's we were informed to wait, man. weren't we? Didn't the director just tell us to tell this guy that he took the part and that we were supposed to just leave. Did, yeah. Okay. Did I, did I, Ted, misunderstand no, that? No, you were right. Okay. Speak is a generous word. He got what he needed and fucked promptly off. I'm very sorry about that. He's, he's not known for his good manners. Um, say, uh, he's looking over the table. Uh, did any of you take um, the uh, the uh, capsule lock here? It's left. That's the piece that directed. I'm sorry, I have to have yes. this clarified again. Yes. That's the, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he hadn't named it, uh, but, like, that is definitely... Yeah, he only took yeah. one thing, uh, mm -hmm. the director did. Yeah, your director, referee, took it, said something, I don't, it's tech speak, it's above my head. Mm -hmm. it's cer certainly not Ted already forgetting again what we were <laughs> supposed to tell this guy. I apologize, he's, um... It's been hard for him in the past few years. We worry he's 
losing some of his ability to focus, but he is a master of his craft, and we respect his ability to make all of these devices work. Every single one of them passes under his eye before it is uh, shipped out. And he smiles. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll perhaps speak with him about the uh, missing piece. And hopefully we'll be able to put this all in order. And in the meantime, uh, perhaps uh, some of our folks in it, uh, in our accounting department might be able to afford at least a um, fa fraction of a refund or some such. You know, make it worth your while, your trip out here and trying to ensure the safety of the general populace. It's very generous. Yeah, we, we, we're not the buyers. Again, that's that's still those four over there. Yeah, yes, but... I'm... Yes, just a just a point I'm making out loud that we'll do what we can to make this right and set you up on your way with perhaps a, a, something more well suited to the uh, demands of the operation. Well, uh, if there's any other questions, I can answer for you. All right. Uh, well, uh, the door is just that way. Uh, the uh, the door opens, and the wooden construct uh, who escorted you in waits to escort you out. I think we'll be staying in town, so we shouldn't be too far off. Wait, is this something we wait for, Igby? Uh, uh, this gentleman, and he points towards the, the construct, uh, should uh, bring you into town, find you a place that might be comfortable, and will remain with you until such time as we should need you. Um, could we maybe do with a sending stone instead? I'm sure it's a lot cheaper to send a mm -hmm. That instead of a construct, we can take care of ourselves and find ourselves a place. We're just not so... I mean, I am not so comfortable staying with a construct when about a ten day ago there was a big massacre because a bunch of them went rogue. Well, I assure you that should not be a problem. Oh, better safe than sorry, though, right? It will not be the case that I should be able to issue you such an artifact as a sending stone, but um, this construct will not do anything that it is not told to do. Well, if it does, it will end up in pieces. He furrows his wrinkled brow in your hey. direction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look, you can send one to find us, but... It's your liability. You may leave, if that is what you would like to do. The construct is fine. The little wooden figure begins walking out of this room, back through the lobby, and uh, out back again towards a towards the valley and then the road and uh, your carriages are uh brought around by the other similarly structured uh constructs um there's a sort of weird indication where they don't insist but they indicate that they are capable of driving you into town for you Hazel will take a break. <laughs> Mel will take the wheel of hers. <laughs> or okay. Torix, I should say. Okay. Uh, and you guys are brought into town towards an inn that is actually uh, not very far from the bridge. Uh, cold. Uh, 
it's it's cheekily called the Stone Cavern. Um, uh, and Hell it yes. Is, <laughs> the the front of it is carved uh, like it is it is made with a uh, with stonework uh for a big open uh entryway with with full doors but like it's it's slightly thematic for the uh, mountain area that it's in it appears to be a tourist location for a few people Mark will quite happily go inside see that this is a wooden building and be devastated <laughs> Uh, upon your um, being dropped off here, or even on the uh, yeah, yeah, upon upon being dropped off, um, silence sort of speaks out a little bit and says, um, "So that weird thing happened in that room with the uh, the wall coming up, and that." person who was there and then not there and then what what happened exactly oh that's a whole can of worms isn't it i think i'm just concerned and a little confused about um what's happening i mean that's completely reasonable i feel like most of us are uh, and I f also feel like we shouldn't be having this conversation so publicly. There's a lot going on, some of which we have been trusted with. They're looking into your golem problem. That, that is the, the very long and very, very short of it. Oh, okay. Um, did they figure, I, they don't, do they know what happened? Not yet. Hence, they are looking into your golem problem. Okay. Um. I'll. I'll go get. I'll go get rooms for everyone if that's all right. Uh, and she wanders off. Finds uh and gets a gets four rooms for the the. How many people are in this party? What? In ten. Currently. <laughs> ten. Yeah. Four rooms. Well, thank you. That was nice. Okay, what's your uh what's your plan? Do you need to sit down and talk a little bit about what you've done or what you've seen more appropriately? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I kind of think we should speak without Grifters going around, if we could. We can agree Looking at that the five anything, of you. anything, anything, uh, that, like, concerns their safety should probably be mentioned, though, right? No. No, we cannot. That's why I would like to speak to just the five of you. That seems reasonable. Where? Do we want a private table or go to one of the rooms? I would prefer one of the rooms where we can't be overheard. Right. Or if we want to get in the carriage and go drive around town, maybe. I don't I mean, come back. Room is fine, I think. Or I guess we could go sit in the back of one of the carriages. Probably about the same amount of crowded either way. All right, r rooms. Rooms more reasonable at that point. All right, up we go. All right, you have um. You have two like double rooms. Uh, well, the out, out of the four four rooms that are available, all of them have uh, two large beds between them and uh, nice furnishings. This is a a good inn, not a fabulous inn, but a good inn.
I'm sorry, can you give me the inn's name again? Sorry, one check up. <laughs> no problem. Also, once we're in the room alone, I will spend 10 minutes and cast Detect Magic. It's the Stone Cavern Inn. Um, <clears throat> and ritually casting Detect Magic, um, there is no magic bugs. Fantastic. All right, look, um, I know we all want to trust Grifter's Bone. They did hire us. They, um, they're the ones paying us and all that. But um, given everything we've just heard, maybe we don't keep them in the loop right now. I agree. One of them may be a changeling. Yes, and to be clear, I thought we were here because we explicitly don't trust Grifter's Bone. True. Like, they, they said they were going to go and inquire with the manufacturer of the construct on their own initially. Mm -hmm. okay. and, I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Yeah, okay. yeah we now can't. If we are to take what he is saying seriously, then we don't know if one of them is an imposter anymore. The game has changed a little bit. Even if they're not, and I, even if they're not, from what he's from what referee was saying, any one of them could be replaced at any time, True. and that person would have all of their memories. I mean, I, I realize that that is a risk for literally everyone here as well. All of you, I'm irreplaceable. No? All right, well. If there is something that's involved in this that's capable of doing that, um, this problem Only is... Only two foot two has its advantages. <laughs> I, 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 I hold up a hand for Inks to high five. She high fives. <laughs> this problem might be out of our uh, depth a little bit. Well, I mean, he was going to hire the Hand of Light, and we kicked their asses. True. That's fair, but... He's also very paranoid, so I'm sure he would over-prepare for a situation like this. He wouldn't just go for, for whatever, that, whatever yeah. chaff for hire. It's not like the Hand of Light was particularly bad, either. Yeah, if, fa the fact is, it doesn't look like there's anybody else to take this on right now. And if there's somebody sabotaging these things, more people are going to die. Yeah, that doesn't spell good for anybody. If we take him at his word, and he's not simply paranoid, and he's not um, misunderstanding the situation, and we also believe that his supposition about what is going on is correct, th I don't know where to begin with this particular problem. Well, I'm sure he will have more information for us when he's not, you know, about to be walked in on. I'm sure Fair. our next meeting will be a little bit more information. Plus, he didn't really get to inspect the construct, and he is the director after all. Uh, additionally, uh, so what confuses me is that he said that there might be some sort of changeling it does he mean within the band or like in the production line that's implanting these constructs with these tendencies because even if it is in the band it's technically not on the approved 
you know, creatures list. There would have been an extra name. Unless he was in the band from the beginning. Unless they had been in the band the entire time. But none of them gave orders. They were all performing on stage. Then... It could have been a delayed order. Sorry, I'm just trying to play the uh, uh, Fiend's I mean, advocate. Yes, yes, yes. That's a great I, point. It, it is a good point. It does provide evidence for ruling them out, potentially. From an infiltration standpoint, it would be easier to infiltrate one of the people making the machines than it right. would be to bypass. The name I, would be an issue, I suspect. The name would be an issue because there would be an extra name if one of them was actually a changeling. Or a name that wasn't one of theirs. Ugh. Gosh, this sucks. Do, do you think that, uh. Do you think the artificer Yiji was hiding anything? Igmi. Igmi, sorry. No, no, no. Elden Ring on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? I mean, the director did sort of imply that he was compromised. Then it could be. I mean, he seems to think anybody in his. In his offices could be, and to be fair, he's not wrong. Yeah. Yes, and, Once and especially you know that one is somebody with, I guess, uh, Igmi's level of access and sort of, you know, he could look at it and be, oh well, wow, this is really weird. Nothing's, nothing's wrong, and be hiding information the whole time. I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of what any shapeshifter could be doing because, frankly, I feel like we'll run ourselves in circles. Whether Igni wanted to call the director because he genuinely understood that this was messed up and only the director could solve it, or whether he was just trying to get the director's secrets by, by bringing him in, I mean, we probably won't know until this is over. I'm not. I'm honestly not sure there's anything we can do in, right now until we hear from the director. I mean, I guess we could try to keep piece together whether everybody in Grifter's Bone is who they say they are. But frankly, I don't know how we would do that. Yeah, I feel like just being patient and waiting for him, and just staying extra vigilant for anybody who might have heard this conversation or known about the conversation with the director coming after us, because that might be a good way to gather intelligence. I'm going over in my head all my thoughts on, like, the, the crew, the, the, the band. They've been fairly... Nothing jumps out, you know. Look, I hate to be the one to say I told you so, but um, I did say the band was much better back when they were grinders, Bone. <laughs> huh. Well, I... <laughs> Should we should we ask questions at least to the band, or just try and get to know them, see if there is anything weird or off about any of them? I don't think we have a frame of reference to know one way or another. That's kind of my the reason for asking in the first place is because if we don't have a frame of reference, then we can't really do much on that category. If they can be replaced sufficiently. We won't be the ones to notice. Especially if only one of them is replaced, or even two. We could always try and separate them, take them to different parts of town, and ask them if anyone's been acting weird. Although I don't know if they'll be willing to divulge information to us. We hardly know them. Yeah. <laughs> 
And if you were one of them and you were an infiltrator, well, you'd first off know that we're looking, and second, you would cast aspersions on somebody else. Very true. <sighs> we're just... Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't... Hmm. No, I, okay. also, I, I, I don't think Technically, Hyacinth can. One cantrip at a time. <laughs> I don't think it's a worthy venture to ask them, but I feel like the one that does divert e either it is, you know, like a unanimous thing that everybody but the one person thinks that that person has been acting weird, or it's the one person who diverts blame to another member. From what we've heard, they're not going to really necessarily act weird. They're going to get all the thoughts and memories of, yep. of a person, so I think I mean, I I I am not eager to do this, but it is not out of the realm of possibility for me to attempt to do as the director had tried to do with us, and probe deeper into their mind and look for a starting point or a gap what as the magical expert here what form of magic do you know of hyacinth that could take a person and implant it or i guess sufficient to do this inside of another person all of the memories and identity, for lack of a better word. I think that might be above my purview. Um, I know of magic that can modify one's memory or uh, take a thought and place it into someone else's head. But on a grand scale such as that, that seems beyond what I've heard of. I am not entirely certain, and I think my situation may be different in some ways, but... This sounds familiar. How's that? There is a point in my memories that I don't remember past before I was Benerman Lucille's daughter. How old were you when that happened? Because, I mean, no one remembers all the way back, right? I mean... No, but when I became their daughter, Joyce, I had impressions, emotions... I was, uh, prepared. Prepared? Yes. Prepared for what, being their kid? Yes. And if... Those are your first memories. I guess it's unknown to you who it was that prepared you, or how? Uh, you can see, like, habitually, like, her face is, like, kind of contorting occasionally to anxiety. And you see she, like, rubs it and almost looks like it, like, reverts changeling style back to the, like, calm face. As she's, like, trying to get her composure. 
I don't I don't think I'm supposed to remember him. But you remember it's him. Yes. Well, maybe. They were tall. So you remember it's a him and he was tall. Yeah. Perhaps uh, you would allow Hyacinth to work some of her magic on you. See what else you remember about who prepared you and perhaps why. Yeah, Hayes at this point is like nervously tapping on the floor with her foot. Um, I feel like I should, shouldn't. Well. It is a long shot. It's similar to what seems to be going on here, but not necessarily related. I was going to... I was going to let him do it, because maybe he would know. Um, but if you want to, Hyacinth... Uh, Just stick, just don't, don't rifle through my memories, please. I wouldn't deem to. And I do not wish to do this if you are not fully in agreement that this is the course of action you'd like to take. I do not want you to feel pressured into doing so. One's mind is, should not be messed with without good cause. She takes a deep breath, kind of like straightens her shoulders. Okay, do it. Well, I will try to probe mind and look specifically for uh, this person yeah. as has been described. I will specifically like think to try to like help it along like trace the shape of what memories I do have about any of it. Sure. To try to like focus Hyacinth towards it. I think I'm going to make Hyacinth roll an Arcana check at advantage for this. I also know you're doing something. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Wait till last cookie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I ate a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a soft glow that is around these memories as they sort of have blinded out um the uh, background and and like world of the reality uh, of this memory um, but sort of pushing through that um, Hyacinth you see what is the uh, pale green grass and uh, and soft drifting lights um, as well as the base of gigantic white trees that stand in a circle. And you don't see those memor- you don't see that shape per se, but you know what that shape is. You can see that there are two of these trees within the view of this memory, um, in Haza's mind. Um, and you know that these trees form a circle because you know where this place is. Um, the person who is in instruction with Haza is someone who is sharing empathic memory, um, who has a face that is 
in a morphous change. The, the blank expression that is seen is that of a pale white face with white eyes and white hair that hangs loose and free around their pointed ears. Um, uh, but the face changes to that of um, an eladrin uh, in bright, warm summer colors and uh, and a crown of tattoos that indicates um, a master of arcana um, to your familiar eyes. Um, and as this person changes back and forth uh, in kind of this fluid memory space, uh, these tattoos sort of linger on their changeling form. Uh, you don't necessarily have a name, but you could, without, you would be able to recognize this face again. And you know this place uh, because this is the floor of the city Senelis, uh, the capital. Um, Titania's home city. Uh, well, city where she makes her home in the Feywilds. Okay. Well, I I saw a face I did not recognize, but I recognized where. Um, somewhere I'm familiar with. Sinalis, the capital of the Fey Realms. Uh, Titania's domain. There was a face, it changed, it mutated much, but always a a tattoo crown, um, which, I mean, that signifies a, a master of arcane arts, but it is no names, just a face that I would recognize. There's, there's, it's the thing that stuck, that's familiar, but a bargain is a powerful thing. A, a bargain is a powerful thing. Uh, you see Haza is like visibly like, kind of like wild eyed. Her eyes are like slowly starting to lose color. He's up. He's up. Just take a seat. I uh, I'm gonna go for a, a run. Um, I don't think that's a good idea right it's now. But fi it's fine. I'll just it's I'll just be. You can you can throw a, a bird if uh. Do you want uh, some, Do you want some company? No, no. It's that's that's yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna uh Hazel, Hazel, uh, we're in a city where there may be people replacing people. I it are are you sure? Uh I yeah, they're they um not I maybe not maybe you know what I'll just go sit uh with the carts for a bit, maybe. Well, uh, Hazel, one moment please. Um I understand this is uncomfortable and I understand. This is bringing up some memories that um, are maybe a bit painful. But, as Torek has mentioned, we are in a city and in a circumstance where individuals can very easily be replaced with almost no ability to tell the difference. I'm not comfortable with you or with anyone going off on their own right now. So, if you'd like some time, I completely understand that. We'll leave you alone in the corner of the room. That's fine. You have you have the you have what you need from what you That's what I was going to give him. So now you know Hyacinth and I'm going to sit over here for a bit um like she kind of like <laughs> sort of like almost hustles over to the corner 
sinks in it as she does like she gets physically smaller uh and her face like locks into that like very placid expression again as like the change like shimmer goes over it He's trying to speak soft enough so that it's at the very least unintelligible to Haza. <laughs> so we learn there's some. Okay. D do we have any idea if whatever happened to Haza is actually tied to what's going on now? Is that something you got a sense of? I don't think I had a sense of that. Um, just the correlation of the planting someone without them knowing exactly why they've been planted somewhere. I can't think of why Titania would wish to infiltrate the mortal realm. You, you can't? You can't. I'm sorry, that was me being sarcastic. No, 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 I'm, I'm are you, like, I'm, I am pointing out so that Hyacinth has a, a, a full background. Yeah. There Let's is see. no reason there is some, like, that is far outside of a, cons not only that, this is on the floor level of the city. Mm -hmm. The entirety of the city is in the trees. This was being done away from public eye. Like, this is, your understanding of this is, this is, that was a weird fucking thing, but very identifiable to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will relay that, that it seemed, you know, furtive. Uh, I recognize the location, but I don't believe it to be, you know, anything happening under Titania's purview. Um, oh. It does sound like we've got one piece of concrete information that we might be able to investigate further. You said that um, this individual, their face was always changing, but there were tattoos that seemed constant. Mm -hmm. um, tattoos that like I said, I recognize as being significant. Um, they are a, a mark of one who has mastered the arcane. Um, so they're marks of a tribe or a clan or an institution? Would this be like connected to like my order particularly, or...? It is the case that the Fey, typically the Eladrin, um, will tattoo themselves in accordance with their profession. So often it is like combatants or workers, craftsmen, uh, tattoo primarily their arms. And then, uh, and then arcanists or uh, academics, uh, their brow and neck. Yeah, I'll share that information as well. Not as helpful as I had hoped. I was hoping it would be individual enough that um, we might be able to use it to find an identity, but perhaps we can narrow down what uh, academic institutions they may be attached to. In my case, I think that I was traded. How do you mean? What do you mean? Traded. Uh, 
you said you grew up in a in a little human family, right? What do you mean? Yes. What were you traded to them for? Well, when I got there, Joyce wasn't there. But I was. Who, who is Joyce? You, you said that name a couple times. So what, they didn't have any kids and, and you were sent as part of some deal? No, they had a kid. So they had a child named Joyce. I think. And you believe that in whatever happened, Joyce was taken and you were sent as the replacement? I don't know for sure, but I think so. I, I don't. I don't know. I think so. It might not be the same, but it might be similar. If that's how they're doing it. it sounded familiar, but different. Not kids, I don't think. But, uh, it sounds awful, Hazel. I'm sorry. It's fine. I haven't thought about it. It's useful. If this is what they're doing, then it has to be it if not the person, the process. To, if it's uh, not just mind control or some other magic thing, if it's changelings, then they're not like the changelings that are from here. Do you think Joyce's parents were aware of the swap? They became aware. But I don't think they were initially. I'm pretty sure they weren't initially. Like I said, that it's the it's the process that sounded familiar. Yeah. The knowing enough to, to do the job correct. If it isn't, if they're changelings, then it's not like the changelings that are from here. I've met some of those. They don't have this. At least I don't think that they do. But maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just mind control, and they're just being controlled by something bi big or something. Maybe he was wrong, or he just jumped to conclusions when he saw my memories, because it made sense for what he was scared of. My worry and why I wanted you to look was if it, if this is the process, then it's something else that isn't from here. It's, it's bigger, I think. I guess you would know better, but. certainly have fear that whatever this is could be connected to you know my own quest in some way um if it's working underneath uh, Tanya's nose but i have no way to verify that yet um 
and I can't see why they would be concerned about automatons in this town or why they'd set them to rampage. Again, all of this is conjecture. I think when we get the opportunity to speak with the director again, maybe we can learn more. Yeah. I just wanted you to know in case it it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I maybe it's not, but if it is, then and you don't know, better that you know. Well, we will do what we can to get to the bottom of this, um, and we, you know, I hope to be able to help you with figuring out what the deal is i don't need helping with that i don't really want to know it's not okay. important to me to know but i appreciate the offer indeed oh here's a Certainly, I respect that. And your history is your own. And you may choose to share as much or as little of it, or investigate as much or little of, as little of it as you wish. That said, there's a real chance here that... some aspects of your history could be affecting or could lead to clues that will help us understand the greater issue that is going on. I am not against the investigation of them for a greater good. I am just not interested in them for personal reasons. I understand. It's not... Oh. It's not valuable to me. I understand. Well, that's very gracious of you, and... Um, should As we reach I said, a point... It, maybe it has nothing to do with this. Maybe it's just familiar... But he started talking about changelings, and he it got me thinking. So it's just better that you all know, and that it's out there, and that you can... It's just one more thing you know about, in case it does come up. In case it is important. Right, in case they are related, and in case we need to investigate any further. Um, it is certainly good that we know, and um, very gracious of you to share this painful part of your past with us. If, however, we... The investigation does take us down that road and it gets too painful or too personal, don't hesitate to put your foot down and tell us that you've shared enough. It is, after all, your history and your memories that uh, we may go rooting around in. You ultimately have the ability to say enough is enough. It caught me off guard, um, but I will be ready next time. Very well. Anyone have any idea what the next step is? I think wait, right, for word from our new friend. Maybe our only option. Yeah. Unless we like... wish to interrogate Grifterspawn. I don't think that would do us much good. Like I mentioned before, I feel like if anybody actually was replaced in Grifter's Bone, there would be another name added to the list. So either somebody tinkered with it or it came out of the shop like that. 
it could be, I guess, pertinent to ask how long ago uh, they purchased this automaton. But other than that, I don't think any of like invasive questions drawing suspicion to the other bandmates would be conducive at this point. Maybe just keeping an eye on them will do. Well, the director was looking specifically for gaps in memories, and uh, we could present to Grifter's Bone. Um, I mean, they must understand that they are at least somewhat suspect here, and just in an attempt to clear them, uh, I could as well look for these gaps. Um, You can also look right before the concert, see if any of them instructed the columns to do anything. That's very true. When things are mentally controlled with magic, do they remember being mentally controlled with magic? How does that work? I suppose we would have a test subject for that theory if we still had a... Oh, what's her name? Thistle? That, uh... Starts with the TH. Tabaxi. Burn. Burn. It was a plant. I got it. I had it <laughs> in my hands. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it seemed like Fern had specific conditions that, you know, she could not go against, but she remembered everything just fine. Um, it could be right. that these gaps are. I'm not sure. Let's say all of Grifter's Bone are who they say they are, but they had a gap. Possibly that was a moment whenever they were incapacitated and replaced for a temporary time. Um, or if they're being controlled only for a short time. Maybe they're normal all the rest of the time. I mean, I suppose I, I could try that if anybody is willing. What do you mean? Like... It would only be a sh short time. I mean, I, I know a spell that overrides somebody's directives. But mm -hmm. can you make someone like do a com like a like a day of work, but just be under your control? Uh, no, only spirits. I don't think that's the, or rather. A, Revived corpses. How? Um, I understand the scientific need to try things out, but we do not know how it is anyone's controlled, so whether or not we remember something from this doesn't exactly get us anywhere. That's uh, true, but... If it does leave a gap, we could at least have an idea. If it doesn't work, then it's not ruled out, because it might not be the same thing. But if mm -hmm. it is, then, you know. Also, it could be possible that us knowing that it's going to happen affects the results of this experiment. Um, we'd remember allowing it to happen, at right. least. Right. If they're being controlled by something, does the person doing it have to be nearby? Or uh, if it's not a changeling swap, if it's... I think uh, Fern proved that that's not true. Yeah, but we, uh, yeah. we saw with Fern that there can be a pretty big range of influence. That can have specific triggers. Well, either we speak with Grifter's Bone tonight and see what we can learn, or we let it be until tomorrow and hope that we hear back from the director soon. If we go looking into Grifter's Bone and their heads, um, 
we're going to need a pretty good excuse. I mean, I would hope to do so. Uh, I, I, I won't do so unless they agree to yeah, such a probe. Um, it's the trying to get them to agree to it. Like, what do we say? Because like, I feel like, at least if we're going to be doing this thing for the director and the investigation, uh, he doesn't necessarily want them to know that this is known and a thing. Mm. That's I why believe he that sealed them behind a wall for a second. Coming to them and... Uh requesting permission to uh, investigate their memories to get a clearer picture of the time um, and look for any discrepancies. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we could say that they just want that so they can get a clearer picture of what went on. That seems reasonable, I guess. Uh, we could even know? be a little more honest and say we have reason to believe you may not remember a period of time um, and that I would be looking to uh, see if I can seek out a blocked memory of some kind. I think that yeah, it could be, if, if it is this, you know, mind, whether it's mind control or a sleeper agent type situation it could be that you know if one of them is a changeling they are not cognizant of that fact right now and it is just like there was a moment where maybe they act maybe some programming some tell some command was given and that overrode them for a moment they went and did the thing they were supposed to do and then they returned to just being Joe Blow from Grifter's Bone without the memory of having done the thing. How mad do you think the uh, the folks down at uh, at the artificers how mad would they be if I tried to work an enchantment on the uh, thing that they sent with us. Incredibly. Really? I mean, it's presumably the purposes. it's their prop. Well, we might have to like buy it because you might break it. Oh, it won't I don't break know how much it. it costs. Who and knows? The director know might be more uh, agreeable to you doing whatever you want if he thinks the rest of them are uh, yeah, maybe ask him first before you put some magic into the magic robot. I'm not going to put it into it. I'm just going to try and affect it. For a I mean, isn't that the same thing? Like, you're putting magic in a thing to make it do a thing. It already has magic in it to make it do the, the thing. Isn't that how, like, it works? <laughs> Mel shrugs. <laughs> Either way, oh. I think your plan for Grifter's Bone is a good one, Hyacinth. I think it makes um, sense. Inks, Oz, Torg, have you any thoughts? I think we're just tipping them off and we should wait to hear from the director personally. Wait to hear from the director first. Hmm. I think yeah. you make a good point. Um, waiting is not a bad thing. Nothing drastic should change between now and then. I, I, I tend to agree with Inks here. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that they agree, and you do find that there's some gap in their memory. Given what we currently know, or what little we currently know, what more will that tell us? I think the benefit of waiting 
outweighs the benefit of tipping our hand and potentially learning that someone has a gap in their memory that may or may not be indicative of something nefarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's no real way to decipher where that gap comes from, who's controlling them in the first place. So it would just put culpability on them and they might, you know, react to that. Very good points. Torque? I've said my bit mostly. Can't trust Grifter's bone. Not that they're untrustworthy. We just don't know what's going on. Indeed. Well, there might also be, and this is shooting in the dark and it's way out there, but there are magics that can change people's memory, and it might look like there's a gap in the memory when really it was just an enchantment at first, and then a memory spell, and then we start uh, accusing and becoming suspicious of someone who's actually a victim uh, in the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Right. It just won't give us enough information. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's reason enough to decide to postpone any invasive interrogations. Um, Let's hope we hear from the director quickly. Mm. Okay. In that case, we are going to end session there. Before I forget, mm -hmm. the where's the construct right now? It's outside yeah. your room. Okay, I'm... For bedtime activities, I am going to walk outside the room and spend the night like against the opposite wall from it. <laughs> and I'm going to try and not sleep. I'm just going to be doing paperwork by candlelight in the hallway. Okay, make me a con save. Come on. Oh. <laughs> All That's right. fine. That's totally fine. Wait, do I have inspiration? I don't have inspiration. Okay, that's fine. Womp womp. Okay. All right. And we'll call it there for tonight. <laughs> Go away, everybody.